Uh, welcome everyone to the uh, January 23rd meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. My yeah. name is Rachel Zenberry. I'm the chair of the board. Um, tonight we are meeting via Zoom. Um, we appreciate everyone's flexibility with the emergency change of location due to the inclement weather and the closure of town public meeting locations. Just so that everyone is aware, we are being uh, recorded by ACMI. Um, before we get started, um, what I'd like to do first is take a roll call for the members of the board to confirm that they are present and can hear me, starting with Kim Lau. Yep, I'm here. Jean Benson. Present. Steve Revelak. Good evening, Madam Chair. And uh, Melissa Tentopoulos will not be joining us this evening. Uh, we have two uh, staff members from the Department of Planning and Community Development here with us this evening, uh, Director Claire Ricker and um, Assistant Director Kelly Linema. Yeah. Hi, Kelly. Um, so just two <coughs> items of note before we uh, get started. Please note that um, we will, uh, please note to not unmute yourself um, unless you are directed um, to do so during public comment or um, as if you are the applicant for one of our hearings this evening. Please also be aware that you are not permitted to share any material in your background uh, of your um, of your um, your uh, head headshot here on Zoom. Um, all material must be shared by the meeting host. And with that, we will um, move into uh, our first order of business, which is the organizational meeting. Um, and before we do so, I'll turn it over to Claire, who has an update uh, for us on our um, board um, board members. Sure, thank you. Um, I know this is old hat to some of you folks, but um, I, as long as I've been here, we've been meeting in person. So thanks everyone for being so flexible and uh, bearing with me this, uh, this afternoon. Um, it, it's, it's unfortunately my responsibility to announce that um, Melissa Tentakulis will not be continuing um, as a member of the ARB. Um, she uh, has communicated to me and I certainly understand that the um, responsibilities of, of her, her job, obviously working for the town of Burlington have um, just become too great for her to continue um, on the board. And so we're sad to see her go. Um, I was uh, particularly impressed by her sticking um, to her values and her, her guns as, as it were, um, and um, in helping to bring Tate uh, uh, to, uh, to town. And um, she's uh, certainly a voice that will be tough to replace, but um, we, will, we will be um, seeking a new member. Um, the, uh, the opening has been um, on the town website um, for a, a little bit now. It's been up for about a week, um, but we'd be very interested in um, hearing, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, from anyone um, who would be interested um, um, in the seat. Um, so that said, I think, um, you know, we wanted to move into some other business related to terms, uh, lengths of terms, um, expiration, as well as the election of the chair and vice chair. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Um, did you, uh, let's see, let's go ahead and um, conduct the business of the election of the chair and vice chair to start, and then we'll move into the term expiration dates, if that works for you, Claire. That'd be great. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, so uh, the first order of business is to elect a chair. Um, is there a nomination for chair of the redevelopment board? I nominate Rachel. Uh, thank you, Ken. I'll second the nomination. Uh, thank you, Jean. Uh, is there any other nomination? Okay, um, so uh, I appreciate that and I, um, accept the nomination. Is there, um, we'll go ahead and take a roll call vote in that case, uh, starting with uh, Ken? Yes. Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So thank you all, I appreciate that. And I look forward to continuing to serve the town and the board uh, for the next year. Um, is there a nomination for vice chair of the board? I would nominate Kim Lau for vice chair. Kim, would you like to accept? Thank you. Yes, I would. 
Great. Is there a second? I will second, Madam Chair. Great. Thank you, Steve. We'll take a roll call vote for Ken Lau continuing as vice chair of the Redevelopment Board, starting with uh, Jean. Yes. Steve. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm yes as well. Congratulations, Ken. Thank you. Uh, and at this point, I'd like to turn it back over to Claire, um, who can uh, discuss our current uh, term expiration dates and some of the overlap that we're about to experience. <laughs> Thank you. So this was uh, brought to my attention <clears throat> by the board member, um, Jean Benson, that it seems that at some point we have um, gotten off track uh, with um, expiration of terms, establishment of terms, such that we would have two members expiring one year, um, one member expiring the following year, and then two members expiring the year after that over the course of three years. It looks like we made it, um, I have records back to 2009. Um, we made it about two years under that um, <laughs> framework uh, until we in 2014 had three members expiring in one year. Um, and then the next two years, one member um, would have their, their term expire. So it, it, I think part of this discussion is how can we get um, these terms to line up um, so we're back where uh, or close to where we were um, uh, about a decade ago where we have two expirations or three expirations and then two or three expirations in a following year so that we can maintain some continuity on the board. So where we are right now this evening um, is we have <clears throat> spoke with the town manager. The town manager is aware of uh, the vacancy on the board as well as um, uh, Mr. Benson's desire to re-up for another term. So thank you, Jean, um, for your volunteerism here. Um, so Jean will now expire 2026. We have a vacant chair that is due to, or a vacant seat that is due to uh, expire also in 2026, January 31st. Um, the uh, just elected uh, uh, or re-elected chair um, uh, Zembury will expire on June 30th, uh, 2023. And, um, you know, a, an additional term would bring that seat to 2026 as well. And this is where we start to get off a little bit off track because the governor's appointee, Mr. Revelak, um, was, uh, looks like he was appointed in 2023, I think September, oh no, excuse me, it was earlier than that. I was appointed in 2021. 2021, right. So you ended up in the same, um, the same expiration year as these other three members. So now we have four and then um, Mr. Lau will expire in uh, March of 2024. So, I, you know, I'm not sure what suggestions, um, you know, we have here, um, Steve, we could um, renew you for two years um, in September, which would put um, Benson vacant and Zembury expiring in 2026, should you all up, you know, for another term. Um, Ken would be then um, expiring, that seat would be expiring in 2027. Um, and then Steve, we would, or the governor's seat would re up in 2025. Now, I don't know how this works. It, it seems like it's very difficult to sort of deal with um, the governor's office on this. Um, but again, I'm open to any suggestions or ways we can kind of get this uh, uh, more codified and back to where we were uh, when we started. Claire, I don't think we have to start with three year terms. I think that I think that probably caused the problem at some point in the past. So for example, I'm, I didn't pay attention to when everybody's term was expiring, but if somebody is appointed to replace Melissa, maybe they get a one or two year term. So we don't have everybody expiring in 2026. And that, that was Kelly's suggestion earlier this evening when we were discussing this and, you know, sort of semi tearing our hair out. Um, I think that may be uh, the best solution. But then we would have that seat through, have her that seat go through 2025. No. I'd be happy to, you know, so that we can get back on track for, for my seat to be a one or two year 
term to when it turns over in, sure. in June, you know, whether it's me or somebody else, you know, who winds up continuing. So that's totally fine with me. All right, great. So I think what, what I will do right now, Jean, like I said, we've, I've spoken with the manager. You're, um, I think we're, we're, we're waiting on uh, a letter of reappointment. We have the vacant seat. We can change the term on that one and then just um, move forward from there uh, with everybody else's three-year term. Um, okay. Great. So um, Claire, perhaps if we can, as a follow-up, just put a memo together with what the proposed yes. um, new term um, turnover <laughs> will, will, sure. will look like, just so that everybody can ensure that we're all aligned on that for our Excellent. next meeting. Okay, all great. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jean, for bringing that um, to everyone's attention as well. Okay. Uh, pardon me. To get used to virtual meeting again. Okay. So uh, great. So that closes agenda item number one. And our second item is um, the public hearing for docket number 3650, 190 and 192 to 200 Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, so this is reopening um, a public hearing that we had previously heard with a much different proposal um, probably about a year ago now. Um, and uh, we have the applicant with us here this evening. Um, the first order of business would be to ensure that the applicant understands that there will be um, four members instead of five members of the board hearing the case if we move forward with this, with the hearing, if we move forward with this uh, this evening. Um, I do not know when the fifth member of the board will be appointed. I, have, uh, I would assume that we are probably a month and a half, Claire, would you agree, out from that by the time we get through the application period, the interview process, and then the appointment process? That's correct. I think we want to move you know, quickly, but we also right. want to make sure we're getting the right person. So yeah. Right. So um, that would be the, the first order of business. Um, and if we have the um, representative, and I apologize again, I, I can't see because we're on Zoom who the um, representative from the applicant is, if you could identify yourself, I think that would be the first order of business before we get into the hearing. Once we get into the hearing, if we decide to move forward this evening and not continue with this, um, I will turn it over to the Department of Planning and Community Development for a brief introduction, then we'll turn it back over to the applicant for a short, less than 10 minute presentation. Um, we will then um, turn it over to the board. So who here, Ken? Uh, if I can say one thing. Please. Uh, there's gonna be four of us. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Kelly, uh, because this is multifamily, we don't need a super majority vote. All we need is a majority vote. So uh, three votes would do it, just so they understand what the-, the Correct, that's an important clarification. Thank you, thank you, Ken, yes. Um, there are three, um, you would need uh, three members of the board to um, rule favorably on your application um, when a vote is called rather than four in this particular case. So as I mentioned, who is, uh, representing the um, applicant this evening. John John Murphy is here Hi, from John. Summit Real Estate Strategies. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, and we also have attorney and Nessie is here as well, but yes, we are fine with that. So we'd okay. like to proceed. Perfect, well, let's go ahead and move forward then. Thank you for confirming. Um, so I'd like to, at this point, turn it over to um, Director Ricker for um, an introduction uh, for the department's, to the department's memo regarding the project. Okay. Fantastic, thank you. So uh, this project uh, proposes to construct a mixed use building on Mass Ave, which would have retail and 30 residential units with five affordable units at 70% of AMI, 190 to 192 and 200 Mass Ave in the B3 business district. Uh, the building is proposed to be about four stories um, including just under 5,000 square feet of commercial space, 
uh, which could be divided into two units. I think uh, final square footages is to be determined. Uh, parking will be provided 23 spaces um, in at ground level and in a subterranean garage area, as well as 43 um, bicycle spaces. So thank you, John, if you'd like to take it away. All right, I'll we'll actually let right. attorney Nessie go ahead. Yeah. All right, can you hear me, Rachel? I can, thank you. Oh, oh good, all right. So yes, we are here on uh, this particular property, which was the subject of uh, an application uh, about a year ago. And uh, the application did not go anywhere. One of the major reasons for that was that we could not satisfy the FAR, but there were other reasons as well. We're now coming in with a totally different proposal. Uh, that proposal was looking for 37 some odd units. Uh, we're here, as Claire has indicated, uh, asking for 30 units. Uh, we believe that this particular uh, application uh, and this proposal in this area uh, uh, conforms uh, and in fact uh, enhances uh, what is set forth in the master plan. The master plan basically, I think, uh, is aimed toward trying to revitalize and make, make alive some of the areas in town that basically have not been alive for many, many years. Now, we're not introducing a foreign uh, uh, proposal into this neighborhood. You have the Capitol Theater Block across Lake Street, uh, which is a, a mixed-use building, albeit it was uh, constructed in 1928, but it's a mixed-use building. You have the Summit Apartment House diagonally across the street, and what we're proposing is a mixed-use building. Now, one of the uh, items that is really important, I think, for the members of the board is we have bent over backwards to come up with a commercial component that we hope will satisfy the members of the ARB. By that, I mean, uh, we have 2,700 some odd square feet of space ready to be devoted to a restaurant use uh, with wide windows. Uh, there'd be an, an inviting uh, uh, aspect uh, to the streetscape uh, with respect to where the restaurant would be located. The other uh, uh, space, commercial space, would be 1,600 some odd, and that could be uh, retail space. Again, uh, conforming to what's already in the neighborhood. Now, keep in mind that this property has lain fallow for a long time. It's not been uh, rented. Uh, and by the way, the, the restaurant use is, is a follow-up historically to prior restaurant uses on a portion of the property. Uh, I'm gonna let, uh, uh, by the way, we have with us, we have an architect, uh, we have uh, 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 David Barsky from David Barsky Architecture, who's prepared to talk about the proposal or respond to questions you may have. We have a civil engineer, Brian Jones from Allen and Major, who's prepared to talk about the project as well. One point I want to make to the members of the ARB is, we did a traffic study a year ago, and the traffic study was based upon more residential units. We now have less re residential units, but that traffic study even then indicated that there would be no adverse impact on the neighborhood with respect to traffic. Uh, with that, John, why don't you talk about uh, what you uh, can with respect to the building itself? Sure. Thank you, Bob. I will uh, just, you touched on a lot of important details. I'll focus on a couple things and then I'll just want to see if David Barsky wants to add anything before we turn it back over to the board. Um, one thing to note, if anyone is wondering, the mix of units, I don't think it was touched upon, but of the 30, uh, we have two studios, 23 one bedrooms and five two bedrooms. And as it was mentioned, five affordable units. Um, 
when we look at this property, we're obviously surrounded by three streets. The building pretty much is the property line. So I think one of the areas where we really want to revisit was the relationship with the street. So what we did do is shrink the footprint of the building compared to what's there currently. We created more space on Mass Ave, like Bob said, to be more inviting to have that relationship with the street. And in a prior iteration, we had some commercial space, but what I really like what we did with this version is our commercial space touches all three streets that surround the property. So no matter how you're walking around the property, you can have, we can have multiple entrances. We have multiple opportunities for signage for businesses and just an overall better, better relationship, I think. Um, we also believe that this overall design, which I'm sure we'll get into, does relate a little better to the neighborhood than you know what we have been here with before. Um, and back to the commercial space, the shape of it, which was we spent a lot of time on. Right now, the building, the commercial spaces, those spaces are very deep. And commercial tenants, they want they want frontage. They don't want dead space towards the back of their units that they technically have to pay for when they'd rather have the front. So that's why we really tried to wrap this all around with the entrance to the uh, apartments and in between the two of them, um, and also with that more space on the sidewalk. So with that, I will turn it over to David Barsky. If you if you have anything, David. If you don't, I think we can turn it back over to the board for questions and comments. I'm ready for any questions. Anyone? Uh, uh, just one more point. Uh, uh, we are in a B three zone. And uh, of course, uh, this use is allowed in a B through so, uh, B three zone with a special permit. Uh, so we're not trying to do something here that would not be permissible uh, with respect to the zoning bylaw. The B three zone is inviting us to come forth with this proposal, and that's exactly what we're doing. All right, go ahead. <clears throat> I think I think we are all set. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate um, the uh, thorough package that was submitted and the um, updated renderings that we received, um, and the the introduction along with the history of uh, where we were previously uh, on on this project. So thank you, thank you both for the introduction. Uh, at this time, what I'd like to do is turn it over to my colleagues for questions and comments um, as per um, our typical uh, flow this evening. For those who have not joined us before, uh, we will take uh, questions and um, preliminary comments from the board members. We'll then open this up to um, for public comment. We'll close public comment and return back to the board for discussion before um, discussing whether or not there are items that the applicant would need to return back to the board with, or whether or not we'd be able to take a vote this evening. Uh, so with that, I'd like to turn it over to Kim Lau to start us off. Thank you, Rachel. Um, well, as, is, as the previous project, um, I think this is a, a good improvement on that. Um, but I'm gonna ask for a few more uh, documents uh, that's not complete in this package here. Um, one is uh, I would like a, a life study that's, uh, that, that we uh, could do here um, at, the, at the back of the building along that alleyway there and how you plan to use lights along the sidewalk to, to illuminate the sidewalk to give it a little more life uh, along the uh, city edge. And then uh, the ramp and the parking spaces back there. Uh, that's important how you um, look at how, how the light falls around there. So if you can include that, it'd be much appreciative. If you can elaborate on your elevations a little bit more, uh, what I mean by that is uh, I want to see contextually how this building lines up with the building adjacent to it along Mass Ave and along the two side streets. Um, so just to see how you keep the rhythm along that uh, that edge there. This is a real downtown area. This this is the core of Arlington, I think, and it's important that we uh, you know get that. Um, so with that is uh, the information that I think you can uh, add to us that I think I, that I would need uh, before I can decide on this project. 
a few things that, uh, that I would like to make suggestions on or make some changes. I appreciate the fact you pull the building back, create a little uh, courtyard in the front at the intersection of Mass Ave and uh, what's that side street called now? Lake Street. Uh, Lake Street. But you put this uh, arch right at that courtyard, there's this humongous arch. It looks like an elephant trunk or something. I don't know what it is, but um, I'm requesting that maybe you could take that away so it would it'd be less imposing on, on the courtyard there. Uh, it'd be nicer. And, and just having uh, the face of the building pulled back a little more uh, would help a lot with you know the shadow studies, with how it encroaches on the corner. Uh, I think you, get, you did an excellent job of pulling the building back and creating a little courtyard there, but then that arch uh, doesn't do any justice to it. Um, clear, if you show it on the renderings, it really shows up on the renderings. Um, they did that, um, how it comes out, the one in the middle here. And then if you look down in the courtyard here, on the lower uh, picture here, that could be a nice little courtyard space where you can sit down and have chairs and uh, have coffee and and interact uh, with the lower floor, uh, the retail space or the restaurant space with the sidewalk. But you got that big pilaster there. So um, I, I'm kind of requesting that you, you look at that, maybe get rid of that. Uh, I'm looking at um, these brick um, uh, parapets that stick above on the upper floor. They are, I don't know, like five feet up above the roof line on the fourth floor. If you were just to bring that down, the, the building won't look as massive and as, as so, um, um, I don't know, it, it seems like it wants to bust out of that corner there. If you just lower that down and maybe have it stick up maybe a foot or so, because you don't have a tap, you don't have a, a patios up there, you have nothing. In fact, you increase the view uh, for the people on the fourth floor outward. You don't look at the back of the parapet. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's a win-win if you lower that down. You know, you're, you're paying for less building. Uh, so if you can just lower that down, uh, it, it'd be it, it would be nicer. And uh, I'm gonna. What kind of material are you guys using for this kind of brownish? Um, uh, this brown is this some sort of metal panel or something like that? That's for the architect. I'm at, I'm asking. Are you referring to the grays? I'm referring to the cornice on the first floor that, uh, that they sort of that bought would, out a that, would, bit. that would be a bent metal, ideally, a pre-finished, like an Aluka bond type of metal. Okay. So that's yeah, when you're getting down close to uh, where you're really able to see the materials of the building, we're talking about, you know, granite base and the commercial grade storefront. And of course, the brick will um, you know, be a familiar feature. And then above that, um, we're talking about, uh, um, you know, EFIS is our first step here, sort of. The evolution of EFIS at this point is such that um, we're talking about a, a finish that looks a lot more like a precast. Uh, it's a smoother, not dimpled, um, further sort of developed generation of that building system. And uh, we'll be happy to uh, submit uh, whatever, whatever we're planning on doing to submit actual samples to you guys so that you can see exactly what we're proposing, you know, well before it's on the screen. All right. Um, that's a good spot right there, Claire. See, this, see your side elevation? Uh, you have two sets of doors on an elevation, the south elevation. Um, the door to the right, to me, looks like a residential door into a unit. That's correct. It, it, and uh, that is not. It, it's the entry into the retail space. Uh, no, the doors with the trellis that you see, that, that's, that's the entry into the residence. Sorry. If we're, ta I, if we're okay, talking right. about the same thing. No, you were talking. I, I thought this was a side elevation. You're correct. Okay. Yeah, um, and, and to your point about lighting, very important. Um, we've put a lot of thought into that. we will be very happy to give you some very accurate light studies and, and um, uh, fixture uh, cuts and all the rest of it. And, and, and your 
point to the parapets. At one point, we had I had in, in mind the idea that the, the the space behind those extended height parapets would in fact be like a uh, like a patio kind of private space. But I think that the 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 nature of the of the corner is such that that's not necessarily conducive. And the uh, we sort of thought about backtracking to make it so that those would have generous openings, but that you would not actually step out out of the unit. And so the idea of lowering those things would works well. Great idea. And 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 the uh, the archway has always been a kind of a, you know, should we put it in there? Shouldn't we put it in there? I, you know, when we first presented it, I think uh, informally to some members, um, it would, you know, I, I didn't even show it, and then they, I said that I did it, and showed them, and so we decided to throw it in there. But certainly, um, you know, it's up for grabs a lot of ways so well if you want yeah. my vote i would get rid yeah. of it yeah we are sort of thrown it out there to see whether it sticks or not i guess you know but uh, uh, i mean it's more than that obviously i think i think the you know it is a fairly bold urban gesture with the clock um and so you know whether or not and how that all settles can certainly go many ways look at it so many uh, yes it's uh, definitely yeah. a bold move um, for better on, or for worse. <laughs> on these pilasters, um, it, the brick comes right down to the ground. Would you be interested in, in uh, imposing some sort of uh, granite uh, base to it, like similar to what you had on the uh, on that pilaster, just to bring it down to a little, little bit more down to human scale? Uh, I'm, I'm looking at two two things. One is the human scale when you walk around the building on the on the street and how it how you see it. And that's why I asked, what are those, the, the metal finish up there? Do you have any canopies or any, how? It projects, it projects out, it will project out, I believe, nominally, I think, I think we were anticipating about like 12 inches or something like that. So we definitely have some mass. Um, to your point about the granite, I mean, what we're showing in this elevation, maybe we could go to the, to the rendering, the, the contextual rendering is sort of a little more, yeah, so you can kind of see, the idea that the I, I I I messed around with whether or not the pilasters should go right to the ground or have the base, and I felt like from a, from a kind of visual structural point of view, they seem better planted right down to the ground. There would be a reveal, but it wouldn't be um, you know the same thing as, as what's happening along the storefront, which it certainly could be. I'm not really hung up on that. I'm just, just yeah, no. It's, it's I think there's some definitely some more you know some more development to go on here. I think the idea of what you're looking at is sort of give you the general direction and 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 to your again to your point of uh, contextual I'd be happy to um, uh, I, we did measure the adjacent buildings and in particular the the the, the building with the theater which I have always been fond of uh, long before I ever thought I would work on this corner and so uh, I absolutely uh, want to be conscious you know contextual but not well there's that balance this is a mo I, I see this as a modern building uh, and that's fine uh, no. would you no. would there be also like maybe possibility of doors being opened up into that plaza from the retail space uh, i think not? yeah anticipating that that entire storefront open up and be a cafe that spills out Onto that that setback would be, you know, in line with what we would hope, you know. Okay. And yeah, then, certainly. Yeah, those kinds of things. Uh, we could definitely be more explicit about that. Um, I would. I would love you to show for you to show more about that uh, uh, mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. your next presentation. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna get a little technical now. Uh, the, the ground, the basement floor where you have your garage. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 enclosed, so you're gonna have uh, uh, air intake and air exhaust. Oh yeah, from the garage. No, well, all of that will be handled by MEP. And I realize you know. that, but I, I'm I'm interested in where you can put the louvers for the air intake and the louvers for the garage exhaust. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. that's how it how, that's how it's gonna meet the public. So I'm okay. just, I, I like yeah. you to think about that and ind indicate where that's going to be on the elevations of the building. For sure. 
um because because that's usually you know it's it's not going to be the prettiest thing it's going to be a loud thing you know you know it's going to um, be louvered so it's so you know you have a, you, you have a very handsome building here right now you just got to add those louvers in there and see where it goes hmm. yeah no and, and and there's ways of mitigating sound and whatnot I think very effective uh well so, I'd be and i already have a kind that. of idea where how that i'll be interested to hear about that Yep, and then yep. uh, the location of your mechanical equipment is uh, in that. Can you go to the roof plan, Claire? You have it in a corner there. Can you pull it away from the outside of the building and more center? Oh, between... absolutely. I mean, this honestly, this is so schematic in my mind about, you know, when we start to, I mean, we, we wanted to say there's going to be solar panels. There's going to be compressor. It's going to be a compressor farm up there. And, and you're right. Absolutely. I would pull it away from the perimeter which we would typically you put it between the stairwell yeah, I, and I the elevator this, to, this will develop there. much more much more specifically uh, i would appreciate if you showed that on your next uh okay yeah absolutely uh, presentation there mm -hmm. um, i think i covered enough for now rachel uh, <laughs> you want to uh have a look sure, sure. we up. can we can move on and i'll just note that um just with what Ken mentioned with regarding to pulling the mechanical equipment away, we need that in terms of the height um, and make sure that we show that in the rendering so that we can know whether or not we're going to need to require any screening for that equipment as well. Definitely. Okay, great. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Ken. Um, let's move on to Jean Benson next, please. Thank you. Um, I'll start by saying I think there's much to like about this proposal. And I have many questions and many concerns. So let me get into them. Let me start with what the gross floor area of this building is and what the FAR of the building is. And, and this is um, not helpful when the application in different places has different numbers for the gross floor area and for the FAR. Let's look at the slide that's here in the left-hand column, it has proposed FAR of 2.77. The next column over, it has a proposed FAR of 2.9. So we have a discrepancy right there. Note that it shows a proposed gross floor area of 32,366 square feet. However, if we go to the first page of the application, I don't know if you can put that on the screen. Next page, I'm sorry, next page, that's it. It shows a floor area ratio of 3.5 and it shows a uh, gross square feet of 39,238. So we don't have any information. And the narrative, by the way, that accompanies this has yet a different set of numbers. So I have no way to know by any of this, which is the correct gross floor area, which is the correct FAR, and whether the FAR meets the requirements of the zoning bylaw or not. And also, you haven't given us any calculations so we can look at how you calculated the gross floor area. So you're going to have, in my opinion, you're going to have to come back with something that has a consistent number for gross floor area, a consistent number for FAR, and a calculation on how you came up with the gross floor area, and a calculation on how you came up with the FAR. Um, in addition, one of the things that you'll have to do to determine what that is, is determine whether the basement meets the definition of basement under the zoning bylaw for an FAR. And we can only look at that if you give us ceiling heights and dimensions. And there's a, a place in the zoning bylaw attorney and Nessie that very clearly indicates how to do that analysis to determine whether the basement is part of the 
gross floor area or not. We'll do that, Mr. Benson. Thank you. So so we need so we need to we need to see that. Take a look at 2.22 of the zoning bylaw, and there's a little diagram there that'll help you um, with that. I'll also point out if you go back to the previous page, which was A0001, the um sheet that was up there before. Thank you. I, you know, I hate to sort of, no, previous one, the one you were just at before. Yes, thank you. I, you know, I had to spend some of my time adding up your numbers because the floor area numbers were, were crazy. And, and these numbers don't add up either. Grade level one, and, and you need to check me on this, is not 4772, it's 4272. Fourth floor is not 5822, it's 6469. So please take a look at these numbers also and, and see if you got them right. But I feel like I can't make any decision about this project when your numbers are incorrect, your, your math is incorrect, and they're all over the place. Um, as to what's the, what is the, um, whether the FAR for this building is a max of three or a max of 2.8, I think is a discussion I'll have with my colleagues after um, we have all of the questions and answers from the applicant. Um, fourth story step back. I'm moving on to my next topic. Um, can you tell me the building, the side of the building that's on um, Lake Street, is that pulled back or is it right up to the property line? No, the the entire, thank you for all that, by the way. It's very embarrassing that our math is bad and arithmetic is out and I promise you we will tighten it up. It, it's, it's a moving target right till the last minute and clearly we kind of like didn't catch it on the way out the door. My apologies for that. Absolutely. Um, what you're seeing here, the dimensions are from the building face and in the building face uh, itself, uh, the distance ranges from two feet all the way to 14 feet. If you go to the a grade level plan, um, it, you can see building not set back. There you go. So the, the red line, of course, being the property line. And um, yeah, for all kinds of reasons, the building is contained in so so how so on the Lake Street side, how much is it set back from the property line? Um, seven foot six at the at the top and two feet there. You can see the the, the facade of the face of the building, David, not including. Yep. That's actually from uh, edge of curb. It's seven tenths of a foot from the right of way. It's seven feet from the face of curb. So it's only seven. It's less than a foot. It's less than a foot. Correct. Okay. And how about on Chandler Street? How far is that from the property line? Chandler is six tenths at the closest point to the six property tenths. line. Are you, are you talking eight, about the face of the pilasters? Um, yes. Okay, yeah. Gene, was that your question or were you talking about the fourth floor? No, I'm talking about the ground floor. Okay, thank you. And on Lake Street, I know it's pulled back at one part, but the part where is the retail tenant number B, letter B, how much is that pulled back from the property line, if at all? That is seven tenths. So again, that's the pilaster. The door itself is, is inset. Okay, seven tenths. Yeah, the pilasters are decorative. The, 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 the face of the building with the granite and the store itself, that's where, you know, yep. the build. Mm -hmm. So the, the face of the building with granite, how far is that from the property line? Well, it, well, it varies, but but you're talking about two feet to the granite without the pilasters. Is is the is the the 
the smallest amount, and then it varies from there. You know, um, obviously in the rear we have uh, five foot six, I believe it is, and then uh, and so it's right. it's minimal. It's minimal where the building addresses the street as as the existing building is actually on the lot. Okay. Um, I'm, the reason I ask is because the rule in the bylaw is that the fourth story step back has to be 7.5. Right, which it um, is. And to explain to me why it is. Okay, I've got, can you want to go to that floor? Okay, so you have five foot set six step back from that building facade and then another two feet, uh, you know, at grade. At no point is the is the building face that that five foot six dimension is from the building face, not the property. Okay, I, I should tell you, my colleagues and I don't agree about what the seven point five feet is. My colleagues believe it's from the property line, and I believe it's from the face of the building. So I just want to let you know that my colleagues and I don't have an agreement about that. We hope to uh, clear it up when we propose some bylaw changes for the next town meeting, but we, we, we have a disagreement about that right now. Right. Um, so you have about a 5.5 foot step back from the from the building wall. Correct. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, let me go to solar on the roof. Can you show that one, please? So you probably know that we now have a, a the zoning bylaw requires that at least 50% of the roof be solar. Mm -hmm. So Very I different. think I think that when you give us another um, um, depiction of the roof, you take a look at the bylaw and make this consistent and provide us the other information that's required. And clearly you don't want the condensers right next to them because you don't want the condensers to be shading um, the solar arrays. Um, let's go to parking next. So we got a um, letter or an email from um, a resident saying that the ceiling height in the um, garage is insufficient. Can, can you tell us what the ceiling heights are in the garage? As it goes through. Mm. What we would typically do would be to have seven foot clear from the lowest point, and we would anticipate uh, 30 inches of um, structure, 24 inch maximum depth beam, and then another five and a half inches for the slab. Um, Yes, it would be helpful when you give us some more dimensional drawings to be able to show. Yeah, we'll give you a section. Uh, the ceiling the height, the, yeah, the ceiling height in the basement parking area. Absolutely. Be helpful. It would also be helpful if you to give us the dimensions of the parking spaces. Okay. Um, I believe, yeah, they're some, some of them, some of them show and some of them don't. Maybe I missed. Yeah, them. I mean, they're standard size, so we typically would do one. Yeah, right. no, I absolutely. See, I do see that. that there, but I didn't see a designation which is compact and which right, is compact, right. So I couldn't tell which was which. Sure. Um, and um, so I think that would be helpful. Um, yep. Let's go to the next page with the tandem parking. Can Can you explain how, in a thirty-unit residential building, there can be successful tandem parking like this? How do residents know who else has the car and who's going to move the car? I can see that in like, you know, a two family building, but I have a hard time seeing how this would work in a 30 unit building where somebody's car is going to be blocking in somebody else's car. So tell me how that's going to work. Well, the idea behind that was that they would be, we have five two bedroom units and more often than not, you might get more than one car for those two bedroom units they'd be designated for four out of the five two bedroom units 
So the two bedroom units would get two spaces and some of the one bedroom and the um, studios would get no parking. Theoretically, but you know, each year as people move in and out, it's parking is always kind of a moving target. You know, some units may have cars one year, some may not the other year. It's right. really hard to have it down perfectly. Okay, um, go to the bicycle parking. I, can you explain to me how many, so this shows 32 bicycle storage spaces here inside. Are there any other um, interior bicycle storage spaces? Can I, I can I let me let me address that if I may. Um, um, we were looking at taking the utility space to the left, those uh, bicycles, and and transferring that requirement onto grade level, taking away a bit of the central part of the, of the retail and extending the bikes out. And now those bike racks are are in groups of eight, four, four. So we would end up with if we, if very very nicely, uh, for, we, we, we determined that 48 spaces would fit very nicely in that. You know, if you took it all the way from wall to wall. So that's a little uh, something that's happened since we drew this. Uh, you know, we're looking at obviously a number of. This. Yeah, it would be nice if you could show us that because, um, you know, right now, it, under your present proposal, it requires for the residences. 45. Five long term, three short term, if I've gotten my math right. And for the retail, one long term and three short term. So um, we could, I think, allow the retail to switch from long term to short term. But you're going to have to, in my opinion, have at least 45 yeah. long term spaces for residences. Well, we found 48. <laughs> okay, well, that's great. If the next iteration we'll, we'll show how that works that, we'll, that, that would be terrific yeah um, an, another question i've got is do you anticipate how much of, of these parking spaces do you anticipate would be for commercial and how many would you anticipate to be for residential uh john yeah i mean as of Right now, they would all be resident for residential parking. Okay, so we would have to, um, and we do have the authority to waive the requirements for the um, commercial. Okay, it's helpful to know that. Thank you. Um, we got some comments about the entrance ramp slope. I don't know if you had a chance to look at those comments. People said it was a pretty deep slope at about 13 percent do you want to comment on that at all we're very comfortable having done a number of garages all the way, you know because we have a good run front um yeah i and also i mean those David, I'm, I'm sorry if there's any I, I know it's tough on zoom your audio keeps cutting out if there's any way oh um, gosh we, we missed about half of what you just said. Oh, I'm sorry. That's um, okay. Is this, is this okay better? That's better, thank you. Okay, um, yeah, so um, there's quite a few moving parts there in terms of when we finally get, you know, it, it, if assuming we get to that point when by the time we have steel drawings and all those things, all those slope things are gonna get, you know, ha hashed out a little bit more. What we know is that what, what I've drawn works and we've worked with those slopes before and we have you know the 24 foot clearance and more than that on the other side so we have we feel that for what it's worth that we have enough a wiggle room there to make it work um and and we'll you know like i said once once you get to the point where designing the actual structure there's there's things we can do to to modulate exactly what the slope is where it starts how much clearance there is you know moving certain beams around we need to to, okay. to make the thing function. If, I, I'm, I'm not asking you to do that with the next iteration, but if you happen to get to it, it would be helpful to see. Yeah, no, I'm no, we'll totally give you a section, no problem. Okay. Um the rear yard setback. Um 7.5. So this this involves a little math. 
And it looks like if I did the math correctly, and I actually checked one of the comments we got, the rear yard setback should be 30 feet. So we have the authority to alter the setbacks. I'd like attorney Anessi to come back next time and tell me if he thinks 30 is the number that we're going to need to vary or not. I will. Because, I mean, we can do it, but I'd like to know what the number would be if we weren't going to do it so we could understand that. I understand. Um, can, can we show um, one of the diagrams that shows the side on Chandler Street with the parking? I think oh, getting there. I think I think um, Kelly, I'm not sure if you're driving the um, the last page that has the various um, that one. Oh, right that's there. that yep. that will that'll do. If if you look at the center top one, you can see you know those are the tandem cars parked. I guess a couple of questions. Do you anticipate that will be lit day and night? Um, yes and no. <laughs> I think it would. <laughs> that's, it, not I think, a, that's not an answer. <laughs> I think it should be. I think there should be a nominal amount of light in there. Uh, that it's lit. You know, the, the, and also, you know, we we were projecting the idea of sconces along the streetscape on all three sides. And I, I imagine those to be, you know, um, we since actually found a fixture that, that that we wanted to propose to you guys that would actually be embedded in the brick, but it but it, that it would allow for uh, someone to feel safe walking all the way around this building, including the rear. And at that point, the the idea because it's a budding residential, those would be low lights that would shine only down, but would give the people and then there would also be an opaque we sort of imagine a a, a soft uh, buffer of vegetation but probably also a, an opaque fence up to a certain probably six foot height so that you don't get any glare i hate glare in a window in a residential situation so we want to make sure that building doesn't do that but at the same time allows enough light where where you need it yeah, I mean, that's what I was getting at, you know, that that there not be light and glare coming out of there in the evening. And, and yeah, I'll hear, hear absolutely. My colleagues have to say about this, but I was thinking screening there. So, you yeah, know, no, I think it, it could um, even use a uh, knee wall, maybe even a little bit more looking at it. You know, I think needs some attention. For sure. All right. So, that's yeah, all right. that's, that's enough about that one. I noticed yeah. that there's a transformer that's in the rear setback. Uh. It, can you yep. do anything about that? It seems sort of, you know, you have <laughs> the rear setback and there's a transformer sticking right in it. Put a screen around it? <laughs> I, I don't know that where you, I'd be happy in having it in the setback, but yeah. think about it and hear what my colleagues have it's to a, say about it. Yeah, that. these things are such a challenge because nothing can go above them. So just wherever they are, another it has place to be think if there's another place to put it other than the setback. I don't know, but um, um, then we we got another comment asking about um, trash storage and removal. If the trash is going to be mm -hmm. stored mm -hmm. in the basement, yep. uh, in the garage, yep. how's that going to get removed? Uh, they they're, they will roll it out um, typically. Um, uh, there's several ways that 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 they could do that. But um, I think we anticipated rolling rolling uh, trash containers. Who's the, who, would, who, would be, who would be doing that? The trash, okay. a trash uh, uh, service company, typically. OK, so if we were to approve this, that would be a condition. Obviously, we'd want to see. Yeah. It. OK. Um, That's I'll a just, very typical. Sure. I just want to reiterate a couple of comments or requests that my colleague, Mr. Lau, made. It would be good to see image of the building with the buildings behind it. The, you know, a lot of these buildings just, you know, the, the images don't give us a feeling about what it's like 
with the buildings that are right behind it. So it would be very helpful um, to see that also. And um, to follow up on another comment, I think an entrance, if, if there is gonna be a restaurant uh, in one of the two commercial spaces, the one that faces Lake Street, it would be helpful, I think, to have a way in over there too. Yeah, so those are, those are my questions up to this point. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jean. Just to confirm, um, your preferences for the entrance to the restaurant off of Mass Ave in that recessed um, frontage as opposed to off of Lake Street, correct? Well, well I don't, or you both. know, I, I wouldn't say I'm not going to approve this if the entrance is on Lake Street. Um, I just think it would be nice to have an entrance. It'd be a missed opportunity. Yeah. I think, they, again, we would, we would anticipate that storefront being completely open to that patio. Okay. Would be the ideal. And we are happy, we'd be happy to articulate that. So Great. since Great. we're on the same page, that's that's terrific. Okay. And then the, the only thing I would say that is if you put the entrance there, you take away some room for seating because people are going to be walking. No, I wouldn't put the entry there. I'm not suggesting that you put the entry there. The entrance should be off, you know, it could be one bay over more to the corner, perhaps, but um um but the the that that entire storefront open right out is absolutely yeah. I mean it would be nice to do that. I'm not, I think some of my other colleagues might not like the entrance on Lake Street, but it's right across from sort of those buildings, you know, the entrance to the ice cream place on the Capitol building. So it's not completely inappropriate. So I'll mm -hmm. hear what my colleagues have to say about that, but that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Uh, moving on to Steve. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so, uh, I guess most of my, well, my first question uh, regarding parking, I was wondering if the applicants would consider unbundling parking from rent um, as a transportation demand management measure or as a parking demand management measure. Yeah, we would be fine doing that. Okay. Um, yeah, and I noticed that the the plan submitted had a total of 32 bicycle parking spaces and I was planning to really encourage you to um, provide more um, and I possibly make some suggestions, but uh, based on Mr. Barsky's earlier comments, it sounds like you were able to find space to fit 48. Um, I would just ask that you show that on the next iteration of plans. Um, now, I appreciated the, you know, seeing the venting shown uh, for the commercial space on Lake Street. Um, and I, you know, it go, the plan showed going up from the first to the second to the third to the fourth floor. It doesn't appear on the roof sheet. Um, now, I, I understand it's just schematic, but um, if you could include that detail um, in the next iteration, because it looks like it kind of comes up in the middle of the solar plant or may come up in the middle of the solar panels. Um, regarding bicycle racks, so for the exterior ones for the short term spaces. Uh, sheet AV1 shows a wave style rack, but sheet five, C502 shows an inverted U, and I was wondering which of those two you were planning to use. The one on the lower left hand corner was the one that I imagined simplest had the best capacity. The spaces. No, I'm actually uh, referring to the ones in the plaza. Uh, so it looks right. like the bottom lower left. Row. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd I'm totally you. open if you guys have a better or a preferred model. To do the job. Yeah, so the wave racks tend to provide one point of contact to a bicycle and the inverted U's are provide two, so they make for more stable uh, racks. And, you know, you could still, you know, get roughly the same number in a given linear distance. So yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd encourage you to, to look at inverted U or pull and, pull and hoop. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, next question. Uh, so continue staying on with this sheet. Which of these renderings shows the view of the building that someone would see traveling north on Chandler Street? I'm not sure that one does, but I could be wrong and I'm 
just like to get your feet? No, feet we'll feet. give you one. And no, we're really, really covered it. I guess we just kind of focused from looking from the intersect. Mm -hmm. No, no, I, I, I understand the, you know, the, the importance of focusing on the intersection, but um, yeah, no, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a neighborhood behind you that, you know, they're going to come north on that street, and I, I'd like to understand what, uh, what they'll see. Absolutely, and and we will, we will uh, um, give you a, a, a good full contextual, even a bird's eye view of which we've done before too, mm -hmm. so that one understands the mass of this building. Mm -hmm. the adjacent mass no that would be that would, yeah yep no that would be very much appreciated um a few comments from based on some letters or emails that the board have received um in the course of doing construction do you plan on doing any pile driving mm -hmm. i would say no um we were planning on on using the existing basement wall and then uh, underpinning and pouring new foundation up against that wall. So, and so we really don't have to go very deep. Um, there will be footings at the basement level. There'll be some excavation, but no, uh, I don't see any um, need for real um, in-depth. Okay. So the short, <laughs> the short answer would be not anticipated. Okay, good. And uh, my last question, uh, were you planning or had you anticipated on petitioning the select board to change the one day way designation on Chandler Street? No, we were not. Okay, so from your expectation, Chandler Street will remain the one way street it currently is. Correct. Okay, thank you. Um, Madam Chair, I have no further questions. Thank you, Steve. Uh, so I just have a few more. Most of my uh, questions have been answered um, through your discussion with my colleagues. Um, if you could, Kelly, go to that page, um, the first floor uh, plan that shows the tandem parking. Um, just to, to further discuss the challenges that I think we're going to have with approving the tandem parking spaces, just in terms of their usability, I would much rather, quite frankly, give more relief on the parking and see that first row of tandem parking that is behind the retail space given um, to back to the retail space to create a deeper retail space there and perhaps even the possibility to create two instead of one retail space, um, two spaces instead of one retail space there. Um, actually, in my experience, most retailers prefer a deeper space and um, I think that this is going to be a challenging space to, um, to let with the amount of storefront uh, frontage. Um, so if it's possible to look at eliminating that first run of tandem parking spaces and incorporate that into the retail space, I'd appreciate you looking at that. Um, I'd also, I heard with regard to the retail space, um, that one of the things you were looking at in terms of increasing the bike parking was taking away the utility space in the basement and locating that on the first floor by taking away retail space someplace. Um, quite frankly, again, I'd rather give up some of the bike parking to keep the amount of retail space that you have here. So I'd like to understand before you decide to do that, um, how much retail space you'd be looking to remove in order to um, locate that utility space um, within the retail space. It's very important. Given the fact that we have an overall decrease, significant decrease in retail space with this new development to maximize what we are able to um, maintain. Um, I do like the sign band articulation on the retail space. Um, I think that compared to some of the, um, the previous iterations um, with, the, with the last proposal, um, this, this really does have a nice separation between the commercial space and the residential space above. Um, what I'd like you to take a look at is the, um, the coloration and the articula articulation of the um, non-brick facade in the residential portion. Um, it's very heavy. It's a lot of gray on gray on gray. Um, and I'd love to see whether, again, it's through push and pull or um, the, the changing of, of material. And again, whether it's a sheen or whether it's um, a coloration for us to have um, 
more more variation within that facade. Um, and again, less less heaviness um, in the areas between the the brick frames, as as you will. Um, the other thing that I think might help that, and again, especially as you're looking to, you'd mentioned, David, that you were looking to perhaps bring the um, the parapet at the brick, those brick frames that you have down. Um, you might want to look at the the way that you are articulating that cornice. And whether again that's um, that's different that's handled differently at the the brick facade versus the ephus um, facade, and it, it it seems like that is an opportunity again to bring a little bit more dimension into those non brick areas um, by again looking at the the corners the 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 height the the profile um, it it might it might help a little bit again with the the flatness that I'm feeling. Um, in some of those areas. And again, I like the building overall. I'm just trying to, to, to pull away some of the heaviness great that I think stuff. we're starting to feel. Great stuff. Okay, great. Um, let's see, what else do I have? Uh, just a question for the brick. Are you looking at a uh, true brick or thin brick? For no, no thin brick. Damn okay. It. All right. That's Even, why I've got those big fat pilasters that grade because I wanted to be able to I just use wanted to ask grid. the question just to Yeah, no, I know, but I've been, I've been there. Okay, great. Um and then the other um item I wanted to to point out um again is as you're just looking at the overall articulation, the canopy that you have over the um the entrance to the residential yes area um I I like the canopy, I'm I'm just wondering again whether that particular form factor, when you look at the very the the very modern, um, um, the the very modern um, facade that you have through the rest of the the building, and again with taking out that um, that curved element that comes up and over the sidewalk, if if that really is um, the right form for. Mm -hmm. For that canopy. So if you could take another look at, at that as well. Um, I think that again, pulling some of those um, more modern lines that you that you have been pulling in might be something worth taking a look at. Um, and I believe that is everything that I have. My colleagues covered everything else on my list here. Um, so with that, I Rachel, will. Sorry. Could I just um Please. say one uh, one quick thing, just to explain? I take your point on the uh, the parking, just to explain where we're coming from, um, just based upon other properties and the demand that we believe there still is parking. We even have wait lists at other properties. I mean, if it were up to us, we would want one space per unit in a very perfect world, just because we feel. It is harder to the less parking you have, believe it or not, it's still harder to rent those units. So we were just trying to get a little creative with tandem spaces. The only way they do work is if it's either couples, partners, two bedrooms, and you know, it's to go to 30 units and then get rid of four of them. You know, now we're well under 20. It just that's just where we we're coming from, is based upon you know seeing wait lists at other properties. Sure. I and I I understand that. I'm I'm concerned again with um with the practicality of that and the um, opportunity, again, I think to um, look at the, the opportunity, you know, to give that away for something that may or may not be used when there is a significant amount of retail space that could be recaptured is something that I'd like you to take a look at um, for, our, for our next meeting. Uh, any so I'll just turn it back over to my colleagues uh, for any final questions before it will, we will have time obviously for discussion after um, public comment. But if there are any other questions, uh, Jean, yeah, just a couple and 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 I your discussion, Rachel, had me think of them. So one one of the questions is what's going to be in the step back areas um, around the building. Is that going to be planted with greenery? Is that going to be just open to nothing? What's going to be in that 5.5 feet all the way around? 
Are you referring to the the corner? Well, on on the top floor where the uh, oh the thing there where it's pulled right. back five well, and a half feet. What's going to be in that five and a half feet all around? At the moment, it was surrounded by a parapet and and rubber roof. You I, would not I, see the roof because I just wondered whether you could take a look and see whether green roof on there would be an appropriate thing. That to would do. be lovely. So There's what, enough room to do it, and it's all open. And great. Yeah. So why don't you take a look and see if that's yeah. something you would do? And mm. as to Rachel's um, concern about the tandem parking, which I also have too, and I. I also like her idea about increasing the commercial. Many of your units are very small. I mean, you could um, combine a few units and not need as many parking spaces. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just saying that's something you could think about. That's it. <clears throat> Great, thank you, Jean. Um, anything else um, before we move to public comment and- Rachel? Ken, sorry, I'm having trouble seeing everyone on the screen. Go ahead, Ken. Uh, yeah, can we go back to the- um basement plan i forgot uh, one of my notes here uh one novel down thank you uh kelly uh, see where the uh, handicapped van space is and uh walkway space i think you need to flip that and uh, and have the elevator uh the vestibule door go into the lobby there otherwise um there's no there's no way of getting to the second uh, stairway from the from the garage because you're not going to squeeze through a, a parking garage. But if if it's that if the walkway's on the other side and you move the uh, elevator lobby door in so into the lobby or that little that space back there, uh, it's not named anything right now. Uh, you you would have then uh, two means of egress into those stairs. Can you take a look at that, David? Absolutely. Yep. And then on the on uh, if we go back up to the top floor, the fourth floor, uh, the, the the corner unit right there, uh, unit uh, uh, what uh, four hundred two, right at that corner there. You have the bedroom right at the corner, the outside corner there. If you can somehow look at flipping that unit so that the living room and dining room is at the outside corner like you have on all the other floors, uh, I think that corner is a, a very pivotal corner to the whole project because, and you want that to be lit, lit up most of the time. If that's a bedroom, then now it's a dark corner. And I think it'd be better having a lit corner or facades along this building here if you can do that. Yeah, I agree. Thank okay. You. Those are the two yeah. things I missed. Um, thank you. Yeah, beautiful. Great, thank you, Ken. Steve, did you have anything before we move to public comment? Okay, uh, so at this time, what I'd like to do is uh, open this hearing up to public comments. Uh, so if you would like to um, address the board and the applicants, please uh, indicate so by using the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen in Zoom. Um, I will take um, hands as they're raised. Everyone will have uh, up to three minutes for your comments. Um, and we ask before you speak to please introduce yourself with your first, last name, and address. And we will begin with uh, Kelly Doherty. Hi, Rachel. Can you hear me? I can. Thank you. I always like to check that before I get yes. into my three minutes. I appreciate minutes. it. Well, first, I'd like to thank those of you, and thank all of you. You've actually done a very nice job of, of evaluating everything. Um, just so you understand where I'm located, it's 12 Chandler Street, which is basically opposite from the parking garage entrance um, on the other side of the street. So I'm one of your closest neighbors. Um, and I'm not a NIMBY. I am very supportive of redevelopment, mixed use, and affordable housing. Um, my key concerns with this particular project, though, tie mostly to the traffic and the parking. So Rachel, I wanna thank you for your comments about that tandem parking on Chandler because it again changes the nature of our views um, to even more try, you know, parking areas. And one of the things that I had commented on on the, the last submittal 
was that I didn't think that the loading and unloading issues had been addressed adequately, particularly since the bus station stop moved from in front of the Capitol to now be in front of this building, which is great. But the problem is, is that all those former uh, businesses were doing all their unloading on Mass Ave. And on the occasions when they unloaded on Chandler, they had that little parking area there, which is that nook that's gonna go away and become the parking garage entrance. So I would like uh, both the board and the, the proponent to really carefully look at the loading and unloading issues, because just looking at the new residential addition, not even you know counting the commercial, we wanna see commercial. And we're used to commercial and, you know, we're just, we want to be sensitive to where all these trucks are going to be. <clears throat> so, excuse me, if you're assuming 30 residents coming and going, um, that's 60 trucks if they move every three years, if this is rental rather than condo. Um, and super conservative, that's about two trucks per month in, in my basic calculation. That's not counting any of the commercial. That's just residents moving. And you can imagine on some summer weekends, that could be four trucks. <laughs> so, so Rachel, to your point, maybe a portion of that tandem parking could be looked at as a, an additional unloading or loading area. I don't know. We still want it to be quiet. We don't want super lighting in those areas. So I'd have to look at that more myself, but just thinking outside the box. My preference would be if there's a way to dedicate an area on Mass Ave for that. Clearly, that's uh, something the board will have to look at. Um, one of my other concerns, and I, I may exceed my three minutes, but I'm trying, um, is that garage door. Is there actually a door or is it just an open garage? Because one of the things we're concerned about is garage door sirens going off. Because if, if residents are accessing the garage 24-7 or if um, trash trucks are going down, you know, in, in accessing, those sirens are going to be going off constantly. So we're just wondering whether that's the case. Um, if there's some form of mitigation, you guys could look at uh, what the issue is for that. Um, it's a concern for sure. The other question is someone, sorry. sorry one I'm so point sorry, point. You're, you're a time. If you have real, real quick, if you can real make quick. Point, never the point. The on. ceiling okay. height in the basement, I just had a concern as to how those trash trucks are going to get in there and move around without blocking the residents and doing a whole lot of backup sirens trying to get themselves back out again. So that, that's another thing we'd like them to look at. Great, thank you. You made some excellent points and um, I'll let everybody know that what I'd like to do, I will be collecting um, items to follow up with the applicant on following um, all of public comments. So thank you very much. Can we submit more written comments? Absolutely, anyone okay. here at any time can submit any um, comments, questions to the board and okay. um, we'd be happy to pass them on to the applicant. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, next, I would like to invite uh, Judith uh, Halperin uh, to speak. Hi, um, thank you. I'm Judy Halperin. I live at 15 Chandler, so um, right across from Kelly and have a lot of probably similar concerns to her about the noise, um, the traffic. And, I, you know, I, I guess I feel that there's ways in which the um, drawings is kind of without the context um, end up feeling misleading. And some of the comments about, um, you know, the, the traffic flow um, not being necessarily a problem when, I, from what I remember, and maybe I'm wrong, that there are, um, there were fewer parking spots in the original submission than in this one. So um, that would suggest that there's gonna be more traffic um, that's a, this is a street where a lot of school children are walking up and down um, to get to the elementary school further down Chandler. So um, I'm, I have concerns about that too. Um, you know, I, I, so I do like modern design, but it really feels like stunningly um, out of character in, on that corner. Um, the Capitol Theater is so classic and um, and we'd be losing the bank facade, which was um, also kind of felt like a real addition to this area. So um, that's that's what I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next, I would like to invite uh, Don Seltzer.
Am I unmuted now? You are all set. We can hear you. Okay, thank you. thank you. Good evening. It's nice. Don Seltzer, Irving, Irving Street. It's nice to see all of your faces. It's been a long time. I hope that you've had a chance to read my correspondence and, and their consideration. Over the years, I've learned that when a key parameter is missing from an application, it's worth, it's worth a closer look. And when an entire set of dimensions are lacking, there's likely an interesting story behind it. As I have written, it appears that there is inadequate ceiling height on the lower level, level for vehicles and for bikes. In fact, the bike storage area headroom looks to be sufficient only for tricycles. And the steep vehicle ramp is dangerous and it violates good design principles that relate to transition zones and zones. And the state laws on accessibility are being violated by this design. I detail this in my correspondence. Respondents would be happy to clarify any questions you might have or be challenged if you disagree with what I've stated. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to invite uh, Elaine to speak. Hi, uh, Elaine Maynard. Um, I'm at 13 Chandler Street. Um, Judith Halprin and I are uh, condo mates and our property um, will abut the back of this, um, the back of this uh, uh, proposed project. Um, so, you know, I, I think a couple of things that I feel important to um, just um, iterate from somebody who is, you know, as close to this project as, as is possible, um, and which I think the board has has already mentioned, but I think it's important for um, me to mention as a property owner. Um, you know, I generally, and, and this was with the last project as well, we really do need the conceptual drawings and how those conceptual drawings are for um, what that looks like for the residents behind. Um, and particularly for um, myself and my condo mate, um, as well as um, our condo mates, you know, in the next couple of houses, this is really an acute and important concern. Um, and I would actually say that, you know, you, I think I would appreciate a full and robust conversation about what the rear of this building is and is not. Um, uh, and I think it's something that can't be covered in 10 minutes or um, it's a real kind of back and forth and, and discussion so we understand it. Um, I clearly have noise concerns. I have traffic concerns. Um, uh, you know, I have line of sight concerns. I have shadow concerns. They may or may not be valid, um, but in lack, but in lack of information, it's very difficult, and it's very difficult to visualize that. Um, but it's also very important for for you know for those of us who you know live here and live closest to to this. Um, there's always, I feel, just in closing, an overemphasis on Lake Street and Mass Ave. Every time we do this, I hear Lake Street, Mass Ave, Lake Street, Mass Ave. Um, but I have hear very little tangible information to address um, the residents who abut this and, and what their quality of life would be. So um, would appreciate it and look forward to a deeper conversation uh, if the project goes ahead. Great. Thank you so much. Um, next, I'd like to invite Chris Loretti to speak. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can you hear me? Yes. Thanks, Chris Loretti, uh, 56 Adams Street, and former member of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. First, I would like to thank Mr. Seltzer for the detailed zoning analysis he provided to the board. I'm going to recommend him to the town manager and uh, recommend that he be hired as a consultant for future EDR special permits, as I don't see town staff providing such necessary analysis to the board. But I uh, you know, came on tonight because I speak in opposition to the numerous zoning violations in this proposal. As Mr. Seltzer explained, they include inadequate yard setbacks, excessive floor area in relation to the lot size, <clears throat> excuse me, insufficient usable and landscaped open space. And in addition, tandem parking is not allowed for this kind of development. The zoning, the zoning bylaw provides the ARB no authority whatsoever to provide re relief from the open space requirements. Consistent with Chapter 40A, Section 9, Section 5.3.6 of the bylaw does provide a floor area ratio bonus in some circumstances, but none of them apply in this case. 
Zoning bylaw section 5.3.16 allows the ARB to adjust setbacks under some conditions, but if the ARB is reducing the setback from what is otherwise required, then, then it is granting a variance. As I previously explained to the board, the ARB does not have the authority to grant variances. I believe attorney Anessi is the source of town council's misunderstanding on that point. I would like him to explain how the ARB can allow zoning bylaw violations in light of the Mass Supreme Judicial Court decision in Anthony Cola Buffalo versus the Board of Appeals of the City of Newton, which clearly states that only a Board of Appeals can grant variances. Now, before you tell me that town council says the ARB has the authority to grant variances, I would tell you that just because an attorney says something, it does not mean that it's true. We call, we call attorney John Eastman's claim that the vice president could overturn the vote of the electoral college. And I would also remind you of the excessive deference your board, the select board, and other town officials gave to the legal interpretations of Arlington's field, former building commissioner. I'd ask you to consider what happened to him and that you not the same, make the same mistake with town council. My you need to hire an independent zoning attorney to advise to the ARB on its authority to grant dimensional relief. Thank you. There's no relevance to why we're before the ARB. It, attorney Anessi, I, I agree that I just can't many of those comments were erroneous. Um, however, he is entitled to um, make a statement and uh, we, are, we have heard them. They are on record. We do not agree with all of them and we will move forward. Thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to invite uh, Steve Moore to speak, please. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. Um, I, I want to say I, I think this is a, uh, a significant improvement over the last version of, of what was proposed a, a good long time ago now. Um, so I have to I just want to register that clearly a lot of work has been done here. Um, a question, though. Uh, the the uh, trees in, in front of the property and on Chandler Street, those trees are going to be uh, installed by the uh, proponent, I assume. Did I, I, I apologize. I had to unmute myself. Um, if you could just ask the questions, I'm going to take those oh, down. Sure. When we're finished, I will ask them of the sure. applicant. So thank you. All right, thanks. Uh, that's the first question is I assume, I assume they're going to be planted by the proponents. Uh, uh, second, I would like to uh, suggest that uh, an irrigation system or at least irrigation uh, mitigation, not mitigation is the right word, uh, some sort of provision for irrigation be uh, installed for those trees, since this is a particularly high stress area for, for trees to get established and grow across the street. There's been a number of uh, trees that have been planted and died uh, along Mass Ave um, previously. Uh, irrigation will significantly help, uh, and maybe a little bit of uh, protection for the trunks of those trees as well. Um, and uh, that that's that's pretty much it. I just want to uh, applaud the fact that trees have been included in the design. I, I uh, would support any green space or green roof as suggested. I think it was by Mr. Benson. I think it would uh, perhaps uh, make the edging a little less uh, a little less harsh on the on the third floor. But, uh, but uh, that's it. Thanks, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, is there anyone else who'd like to speak this evening? OK, seeing no one, we will close public comment and turn this back to the board. Um, so there are just a couple of items um, that I would like to address with the uh, applicant. Um, and this, I believe, can be done um, as part of the uh, next round of presentation. Uh, so to further, um, I had on my list to provide a, a uh, narrative related to the trash uh, removal process. And I would also like to add to that, I think that there was an excellent uh, comment made about the process for loading and unloading for your commercial tenants, as well as for moving trucks for your residents. Um, the question about the garage door, um, whether it's an open or closed door is something that I believe we should address as well, as well as any audi audible warning uh, signals. Um, so we'd need to hear a little bit more about how that is being addressed. 
Um, I would also encourage you if you have not already to set up a time to meet with your abutters ahead of the next meeting. I think that that's an important uh, part of any, um, of any process, uh, especially for a building of this size. Um, and if you could, I believe that I saw in the application that the trees were being planted by the proponent, attorney and SE, if you could address that uh, question, I think that that's an easy one to answer. Yes, uh, we are planting trees. John, okay. we are planting trees, correct? Yeah, the, we would plant the trees and most likely the whole sidewalk gets redone in that process. That's usually pretty standard. Great, thank you very much. All right, um, so uh, I will turn it back to the members of the board. Um, I have, why, why don't I start off by listing the items that I have um, that were identified to be addressed by the applicant before a continued uh, before they come back for a continued uh, hearing. Um, and we'll then have a discussion around any of these points that either require further discussion or anything that I may have missed, if that works for the board members. Okay. Uh, so I'll start at the top here. We'd like um, a site lighting plan, including details and foot candles, especially addressing the back of the building and the ramp and the parking area. Um, we'd like to see more information on the elevations, including context with the adjacent, uh, adjacent buildings, um, and also looking up and down along Chandler Street. Uh, we'd like to see the arch removed um, that, uh, that um, is arched over the pedestrian walkway on Mass Ave. Um, we'd like, let's see, you mentioned that you were going to be looking at the pilaster height, uh, since there is not a, a at the at the uh, at the brick uh, where uh, the frame occurs, given that there is no longer a um, a balcony at that location, uh, you mentioned that you'd be able to submit samples of uh, the building materials on the exterior that you are looking at. Again, hopefully, our next meeting we will be in person, and we'd love to be able to um, see those uh, in person, uh, even if it's a representative of the direction that you're going. Um, we'd like for you to take a look at whether or not you add a granite base at the brick piers. Um, you had indicated that you would be adjusting the drawings to show a, the storefront opening up to the courtyard from the restaurant. Um, we'd like you to show the louvers for the air intake uh, to the basement parking. We'd like you to pull the mechanical equipment away from the perimeter of the building and show that in your elevation so that we understand whether or not any screening will be required. Um, we would like for you to update the gross floor area and the FAR um, to show consistent numbers and calculations for how you arrived at both of those. We need to see the ceiling heights for the basement and a section of the building, um, particularly at the parking ramp would be um, appreciated. We need to show for you to show the percentage of the roof that you are just uh, dedicating to solar. Um, as I mentioned, uh, with regard to the section, we'll need to see the garage ceiling heights um, and also the parking space dimensions. You will need to submit a transportation demand management plan uh, along with the uh, request for a reduction in parking. Um, you will also need to confirm the um, rear setback calculation so that you can be specific about the requested relief that you're seeking. We'd like for you to include screening for the parking that is on the uh, street level on Chandler Street. We'd like for you to take a look at the location of the transformer that's currently in the, um, in the setback area. Uh, we'd like for you to confirm in writing the trash removal process, as well as the loading and unloading of the commercial trucks and moving trucks for the residents. We would like for you to um, indicate in the transportation demand management plan an uh, unbundling of the parking from rent. We'd like for you to take a look at potentially including a green roof at the step back. We'd like you to take a look at the building coloration with regard to the, um, the heaviness of the gray facade, as well as looking at the cornice detail for added dimension and articulation. We'd like for you to take a look at the uh, retail space specifically with potentially removing one row of tandem parking 
and giving that back to commercial space um, and also the trade-off of the utility space, bike parking and retail. We'd like for you to relook at the canopy design at the entrance to the um, residential space. Uh, there's a suggestion to flip the van access clear area with the parking space um, for uh, better, clearer access to the, uh, to the stairs. And we would like for you to reach out to the abutters and um, identify a time to uh, speak with them in greater detail about the project. So I'll turn it back to the board members. Is there anything that you had on your list that I missed? We'll start with Ken. Can I add one more thing? Uh, the alleyway there, uh, is that uh, buffer in the alleyway between the project and the residential? Is there a fence there, like a stockade fence or a vinyl fence, or is it just all plantings? And then uh, I couldn't make it out on your site plan shows this line dot thing. Is that a fence or is that, uh, I don't know what that is, but you guys plan to put a fence there? I can ask if uh, there is a fence. John can answer that. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't tell with, on Zoom who, who was that that answered that question. We'll, we'll give you further articulation about how we. Okay, so that was David that just spoke. Okay. <clears throat> so that we'll um, look for confirmation for a fence between the abutter and the um, property. Can't rear setback. Anything else, Ken? Nope. Okay, we'll go to Jean. Uh, nothing else. I think we need to have a discussion about a couple of the issues, but yes. nothing else for the project proponents. Great. And Steve? Uh, nothing else for the request of the proponents, but um, public comment reminded me that I meant to thank them for their inclusion of native tree species. Great. Thank you, Steve. Uh, so, Jean, I'll turn it over to you for um, items that you'd like to propose for discussion. Yeah, one, one thing that I think we should discuss, although I, I don't know if we can reach a resolution tonight, is, is what is the appropriate maximum FAR for this property? Um, so that's one. Second is, um, I don't think we have the authority to reduce the number of um, interior bicycle parking places for residential units. So I think their, their choice, as I see it, is to either have um, 45 long-term inside bicycle units or have fewer apartment units. Um, so I guess those are the, and, and third, maybe we should have a discussion about whether we would accept the tandem parking. Uh, Ken, would you like to weigh in? Um, well, I like the fact that you're going to get rid of uh, the tandem parking for retail. That's parking numbers, um, to be clear, parking space number 20, 21, 22, and 23. That's the ones that parallel right, right along the back of the re, uh, retail space. Uh, I like that. Uh, I like the approach. I think tandem parking can work if it's a, a minimal, minimal portion of the total parking count. Um, they're pushing it there with four. Uh, I would probably be happy with two, two sets. Um, and maybe got, and if they want to, maybe we have 16 and 17 be retail space. So it's, it's space number 16, 17, 20, and 21. They still have two parking spaces, but then you have the whole side all retail and nothing faces on the street. I was gonna ask that later on as our discussion, what do you guys think about that? Uh, but you beat me to the punch and said, let's take out the tandem space altogether, Rachel. Um, I'm okay with the Rachel, I'm okay with uh, some tandem. I think uh, Gene's correct about the bicycle parking. Um, we can't uh, uh, give them relief on the uh, to minimize it but but can they find all the places to put put it um uh, you know I don't, i'm not sure 
there, there is bicycle parking up front, and that can count toward the, the 45, you're saying that. Is that correct, Gene? No, it can, count toward, it can count toward the parking required for the um, commercial, but not for the residential. Okay. At least that's uh, how I read the, the uh, bylaw. We can ask them to see if they can find all the places for it, but um, I think I think it's fair to ask them to study a way to achieve it again without significantly impacting the proposed commercial space. Correct, and it may help with once they get that section. There's that hatched area that is, um, I believe, that's overhead for the ramp. But maybe we can carve in maybe five, six feet to make the, the retail space a little uh, a little bit bigger. And then you take away a little bit more in the back off where the stairs are to put, to put the bicycle parking up there too. I, I'm not sure. It's, I think it's worth it for them to look at. Great. Steve, any thoughts on the bike parking relief or tandem parking? Yeah, I mean, I had some reservations about the tandem parking as well. And, you know, one of the things I was you know, sort of playing around with as looking through the plans this weekend was putting the bike parking where the, you know, the front half of the tandem parking was just make it a, you know, an enclosed, enclosed, um, enclosed area. It would be uh, at least 34 feet length and they would be able to, and would, should be, you know, long enough to, to fit close at least close to the required number of spaces. Um, but the challenge with that, you know, seems to be, would be repurposing the, you know, the parking, the bicycle parking area downstairs as automobile parking. Um, you know, there's, you know, I have enough width, but there's not, um, you know, it's, it's not isolated to just that one north wall in the basement. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree that I would like to see the applicants work on it. Um, I'm don't quite understand Mr. Benson's question about FAR. Uh, the, this is a lot with less than 20,000 square feet. And I'd like to understand why the FAR would not be the maximum allowed FAR would not be three. It's because I read that as not the lot under 20,000 square feet, but the building mm. under 20,000 square oh. feet. And if you look, that page, it, it doesn't say, but if you look at a previous page, mm -hmm. which I'm trying to get on my screen now unsuccessfully, um, sorry, my computer froze, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I think it's pretty clear to me, at least, that those numbers apply, um, refer to the size of the building and not the size of the lot. So oh. the building is greater than 20,000 square feet, and therefore the FAR is 2.8. So I take read them as the lot size, and the reason I interpret them that way is the first dimensional table in 552A which you know under b3 there's a category which uh, has mixed use less than or equal to 20,000 square feet and mixed use greater than 20,000 square feet but in the um, column for minimum lot area there's no minimum lot area for mixed use less than or equal to 20,000 square feet and there is a greater than 20,000 square foot minimum lot size for mixed use greater than 20,000 square feet well if if you take a look at um the um, minimum lot area, minimum lot area per unit, minimum lot area frontage chart, you'll see that at one point it says any other permitted use on a lot greater than 40,000 square feet. And then it says what the minimum lot area was on a lot less than. That only makes sense if those numbers apply to the building size and not to the lot size, because if they apply to the lot size, then you'd have something that says on a lot um, equal or less than 40,000 square feet, and then the minimum lot size is 40,000 square feet. So it would be completely repetitive. 
So the only way that makes sense to me is if it's the building size and not the lot size. So are but, you referring? You know, I, I, I should say that I don't think in the almost six years I've been on this board, I don't think this issue has ever come up as to whether this is um, building square footage or lot square footage. So I acknowledge that I have no history one way or the other on this. I, I would agree with um, Steve on this one. To me, it seems pretty clear that it's that it's three. Um, I think I think I'll do a little research. That that's and fine. Yeah, I I I'm not seeing it the way that I'm reading it as as any anything other than than three. Uh, Ken, you need I to. See, I see. I see. I read that same way too. But can we ask ask Town Council? Uh, let's. Let's ask Kelly, actually. I think that would be a good person to start with. <laughs> yeah, we, we've always interpreted it as lot size, and I'm happy to look back into older versions of the bylaw to see if there's any clarification. That might that be, be the best. That would be great. Okay. Yeah, I haven't had time to do that. That would be helpful. Okay. Sure. Great. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other points of discussion? Kelly. Um, just the two other things to add, and I'll follow up with the applicant on the notes that you detailed before, but I also noted that um, just some details about the preferred type of bike racks for the exterior. Thank you. Um, bike parking and then providing a rendering as if you were traveling going north on Chandler Street. Uh, yes, I think I, I think I did mention that when traveling both ways on, on Chandler are yeah. part of the contextual need. Yes, but we will definitely add in the um, preferred types of bike rack. Okay, uh, let's see, Attorney Nessie, did you have any questions for the board on any of the items that we identified for further study? No, I, I do not. I, I do know this. Uh, I know that uh, you have been very, very focused on this uh, and the questions from the audience have been focused as well. Uh, we're gonna need some time and I wanna uh, maybe have John chime in as to how much time we need to come back, Rachel, because we have a lot to do. We have some math to do. We have other issues we have to ad address as well. And one of the things that we have to keep in mind is the fact that uh, the economics have to work. If we're eliminating parking uh, query, does that affect the marketability of any one or more of the units? If it does, how does that impact us economically to do the, uh, the uh, project? So that having been said, can I ask John? Absolutely. And, yep. Yeah. Because I, that'll, John, that's actually the next question John, is if John we continue David, this, what's the what's the um, date when you would like to return? Yeah. How much time do you think we need realistically to uh, put our uh, uh, you know uh, do what we need to do to come back? John and David. Hello. Sorry. What John's is the meeting, meeting schedule again? Is it every? Yes. When is the next two two times or three times you guys meet? So we're meeting on the sixth. The I believe it's the twenty seventh. Twenty seventh. Sorry. Yep, yeah, the sixth of March, and the twentieth of March. Actually, I believe we have each evening in March, but we start getting into um, um, more an article here. Town meeting. Yeah, mm -hmm. for town meeting in March. Well, it's not to say we can't do this. We just will work around. We'll have to schedule it. I was maybe looking at February 27th. Did you say that that was? Yes, that is a that is a um, a date. Claire, do we have anything else? Not at this time. Okay, so that would be an yeah. open date. Yeah. And then, and just to be uh, clear too, I think that we need to take into account you need all the materials. Um, what, what was that again? The protocol with that. 10 days or a few 10 days before the meeting, correct? Or a week before? We would need them the Monday before, so the week before. The 20th. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think that would work for us. Okay. 
So Kelly, I took pretty, Kelly, I took pretty copious notes, but will you be sending out a list of what we have discussed and what we need to do? Right as you discussed. That was a yes. No? She can't hear me. Nope, she did. Yes. I, Kelly confirmed that was a thumbs up. Yes. Yes. Good. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, uh, so that being said, is there a motion from the board to continue this hearing? Uh, hold on, let me pull up my other screen so I can get the hearing number. Is there a motion to continue docket number 3650 to February 27th? So motioned. I'll second. Great, we'll take a roll call vote starting with Kim. Yes. Jean. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So we will see you back on the 27th. I really appreciate your um, willingness to uh, review all of these items with us this evening. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who chimed in um, as well during public comments, much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, so that now closes agenda item number two. We will move to agenda item number three, which is the continued public hearing for docket number 3728-99 Massachusetts Avenue. And as I understand, that applicant has requested a continuance to March 6th. So I'll turn it over to Claire for any other information. Um, no, really new, no real new information. Um, the applicant wishes to come back on the 6th. Um, Kelly, I don't know if you've heard um, anything different. I just think they're looking for some more time. Great. Uh, any questions or comments from the board? We'll start with Ken. No. Jean? No. Steve? Uh, no questions. Okay. Uh, so is there a motion to continue public the public hearing for docket number 3728 to March 6th? So moved. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Kim. Yes. Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. All right. So we will see them back on Sorry, I have to get to my other screen to March. Uh, we'll see them back on March 6th. Okay, that closes agenda item number three. So we'll now move to agenda item number four, which is a board discussion on the uh, zoning warrant articles for 2023 town meeting filing. Uh, we'll discuss and then vote um, on the articles and the wording that we would like to submit. Uh, there will be um, opportunity for public comment on these items during the hearing stage, uh, which will begin, I believe we'll be beginning those in March. So this discussion um, on these items will be um, within the within the board. So um, I will turn it over to um, Claire to discuss the um, <laughs> memo that was put together. Sure, thank you. So this is a great um, memo uh, that Kelly actually worked uh, pretty hard on and um, got us this this um, this memo uh, 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 with input from Doug Heim. We sat down with him as well uh, to go over some of our initial drafts. Um, and so Kelly, if you don't mind, um, it would be great if you could walk us through some of these. Um, these are essentially all the war um, items we discussed uh, in our previous meetings um, put together in language we think is acceptable. Um, for submission um, as a warrant article. Sure. So um, in the, on the hearing on December 5, we presented a memo to the board outlining, outlining some of the details regarding um, our discussion at the retreat and at other meetings, just regarding some of the zoning amendments that the board was looking to do. And when we dug into those um, in order to create the warrant, to draft the warrant articles, um, they basically come into two two categories. The first is regarding how to incentivize greater commercial, um, incentivize commercial redevelopment and incentivize greater and better use of our commercial areas. And so those are the first, um, the first six amendments here, which is regarding open space in business districts and um, adjusting the rear yard setbacks in business districts, the step back requirement in business districts as we saw tonight being kind of providing some clarification about whether we're talking about setbacks from the property line or from the building facade, um, adjusting, potentially adjusting the reduced height buffer area and uh, corner lot requirements and then establishing a height minimum in the business districts. 
Um, the second set of articles regarding in, um, improving the bylaw, both for readability and, and trying to make it just easier to use for applicants and encourage redevelopment for the business districts is regarding the Arlington Heights. Um, business district. So we had discussed adopting some of the recommendations of the Arlington Heights Neighborhood Action Plan um, by Consolid, which, which concluded that there were very few substantive differences between the B2, B2A, B3, and B4 zoning districts as they were used, applied in the Arlington Heights uh, neighborhood. And so these two amendments would be to consolidate those four zoning districts into one Arlington Heights business district and then it would also require a map change, which is pretty substantial. So that kind of the last page of the memo details the, the, the properties that would be affected by that. This, the third set of amendments really regards to just kind of fine tuning the amendments that were adopted by town meeting in 2021 with regard to the industrial zoning. Um, so kind of clarify, I know the board was split on um, some of those industrial district uses. So again, all of this is really gonna come down to future discussion and outreach. Um, the second is regarding industrial district development standards that was amended today. So sorry for the oversight, um, but this is regarding clarifying the, the storm design or the design storm that should be used for when determining if a proposal is eligible for an increased height or FAR in the industrial districts. And that's by clarifying the level of storm that will be retained and treated um, instead of just saying retaining and treating 100%. It's 100% of what storm. We wanna be very specific about that. Um, and so we have some recommendations from CONCOM on how to apply that. Um, then because the solar bylaw was recently approved by the attorney general, there's an amendment to kind of make corresponding changes in the industrial district. Um, and then adjusting, um, air, adjusting um, the ARB purview over the industrial district, just to make sure that because the ARB has worked to create some of these development design standards and development standards for the industrial districts, um, just doing a slight expansion of the ARB's jurisdiction to um, cover all of the industrial parcels instead of just those that are abutting the minimum bikeway or are mixed use or greater than 10,000 square feet. The way that we, just one other comment and then I'll just leave it open to any questions or any um, adjustments. The way that we arrived at these was basically looking at every potential section of the bylaw that could be adjusted um, and making sure that we included that in this warrant article and these various warrant articles. This doesn't mean that all of these sections will eventually be adjusted, but because there is going to be public engagement and public comment as part of this, this is not the main motion of any warrant article. This is just kind of indicating the types of things that the board wants to look at in order to encourage appropriate development uh, in the commercial districts, encourage redevelopment and appropriate development in the Arlington Heights business district, and then really fine tune and clarify some of those industrial district standards. So I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone might have. Thank you, Kelly, and thank you, uh, Claire. I appreciate you both um, putting the time into drafting this. I do have um, questions about Three items that I think we had included in the um, in the discussion back in December when we started talking about warrant articles, um, and this they may just be so administrative that they're not in this list. So we did have one that was, um, and I'm just going back to that memo. Let me give you the date of that one. That memo from December first. We had several administrative corrections. Um, uh, that was number eight there. It was section 5.3.21D. There was an, um, something that referenced section zero instead of the actual section. Um, and then we had a uh, adjustment to gross floor area and floor area ratio calculations um, that we were working with the uh, with ISD on. And then there was a section on building inspector enforcement. Um, were those items that we are moving forward still in terms of warrant articles that just don't appear on this list? No, so the first and the last, uh, the first was a Scrivener's error and according to Doug Heim, that could be corrected. Okay, great, simple, we don't need that. Simple error, yes. Okay. Um, the second, Doug recommended <clears throat> that we add a footnote to the bylaw. Yep. 
Um, and so that has been added. Okay. Um, and that basically indicates that although it is part of the bylaw, it is not enforceable. And then it links to the attorney general letter. Um, and it explains that in that letter, the attorney general explains that the it's not enforceable because you cannot withhold a building permit um, for lack of um, for not following town or local bylaws. Um, and so that basically links to that. Right. If the board wanted to kind of go back and actually amend that section of the bylaw to reduce to eliminate it, we would we would have to bring that back to town meeting. But um, we can also accomplish that with a footnote if we don't want to bring that back. Okay. The middle, um, the gross floor area, just because of uh, just basically staff bandwidth and me being out for a few weeks, we just didn't have a chance to coordinate that with the inspectional services department. Okay. Um, however, if the board wants to, I'm happy to draft a, a quick warrant article just regarding that specific section and maybe those section section two regarding definitions um, to refer to those if we want to keep it on the table for future discussion. Great. Thank you, Kelly. I appreciate the clarification there. Uh, so I'm going to turn this over. Um, I think what might be the easiest thing to do is for us to go um, one by one. Uh, in the, the memo and see if there's any discussion um, from the board on any of the proposed um, warrant articles. Excuse me while I pull that up. Uh, and then we will uh, circle back at the end for anything that we may have missed. So uh, the first one is uh, related to the open space and business districts. Is there any um, discussion on this, the wording of this particular warrant article. We'll start with Jean. Uh, yes, thanks. Um, is I have a question and then some comments on the wording. Is this the one where we're going to detach open space from the size of the building? Co correct. Yeah. All right, so I, I'm not clear why it says increase the requirements for landscaped open space and reduce the requirements for usable open space. Why wouldn't we just say to modify the requirements for landscape open space and usable open space? So as we sort of figure out exactly what the wording is, we're not boxed in by which ones we're going to increase and which ones we're going to reduce. But it could just simply say, um, instead of to increase the requirements, blah, blah, and to reduce, you could just say, to modify the requirements for landscaped open space and usable open space. Um, Attorney Heim recommended that we be specific in, in how we were intending to do this. Um, it, you know, if the board would prefer to be a little bit more generic, um, that's but, also fine. But we may not be increasing the requirements for landscaped open space and reducing for usable when we detach open space from the size of the building, we have to figure out how those things relate to the size of the lot. So I can't I can't say that this is where it's gonna end up, which is why I'd like it to say modify. Sure. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just adjusting these and track changes. And then once you go through every one of them, I'll just quick run through so you can see that these changes are made. Is that all right? Yeah. That's perfect, so, thank you. That was my comment on the first one. Great, thank you. And I uh, had the same comment as, as Jean. Um, I, I did not think that we necessarily were agreed upon increasing landscaped open space. So that was, I, I think that the suggested change was great. Ken, any comments on this one? No. Okay, Steve? Uh, I essentially had the had comments that were very similar to yours and Mr. Benson's. Wonderful. All right, uh, so the next one is uh, the rear yard setbacks in business districts. Any comments? And we will start with Jean. Jean, I'm just gonna start with you for all of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think it's better wording not to say for mixed use and any other permitted use, but just say re requirements. And you have requirement and requirements in the same sentence, by the way, there's a double word there. Uh, so requirements for any other use in the business district. So I would get rid of um, mixed use and the word permitted. So it just be requirements for any other use, for any use in the business district. Okay, 
Um, the, just the one thing is that mixed use is the specific type that's called out in the table and any other permitted use is another use that's called out. And I just didn't know any other permitted use I believe is commercial. Um, and so I didn't know if we also yeah. wanted to, if we just say um, establish the criteria for any use in the business districts and then the main motion would just stick to those two. So, okay, okay. So that's for such requirements for any any use any use thank you okay done thank you jean kim good steve nothing here all right thank you all right our next one is uh step back requirements in business districts jean okay i have a couple of things here um one is i looked up principal facade and we don't have a definition of that and it's used one or two other times in the bylaw. So I think if we do this, we don't need to adjust this, but we just might want to put in a definition of principal facade when we come up with the, the main motion. Um, um, I didn't know we were going to do this, so it would come in at a higher story. Is that what we agreed upon? We didn't necessarily agree upon it, but that was your suggestion. That was actually your suggestion, Dean. So um, I just no, wanted my, to leave it my, in there. My, my suggestion, if, if that was my suggestion, I guess it was, but I don't remember that. My okay. suggestion was looking at the housing production plan that um, um, that the um, step back not be on the principal facade because the housing production plan says, look, Mass Ave is pretty wide. You don't really need on a five-story building a step back, um, but you do need them on the side streets because the side streets are a lot narrower. So what I said, but nobody else sort of picked up on it, so I understand if nobody agrees with me on that, but I thought we didn't need um, a step back on the principal facade. We needed step backs if they were on side streets. Anyhow, I just point that out because this wouldn't allow what the housing production plan had suggested, which I actually think is a better idea. And um, yeah, I, I didn't know we we're gonna do an exemption for smaller parcels, but. So again, this, this is just kind of a placeholder. It was a suggestion that other members of the board made was to consider an exemption for smaller parcels. So if we keep it in here, that would still be a potential. Right, right, um, right, yep. Um, but we could, would you suggest maybe apply only to one facade of a building? I think, I think that's fair because I think we need to have a bigger discussion about this because I mean, architecturally, yeah. I would actually argue that Mass Ave is where it, belongs. Um, so I, I think we need to have a much we, we do. We do. Yeah, and, a much but, broader discussion. I'm not sure we can say one facade because look at the building we just looked at, which actually had, you know, a facade on Lake Street, facade on Mass Ave, facade on Chandler. So I, I, um, I think the goal here is to give us flexibility though, Gene, yep, to be yep. able to waive it for one one facade or the other if we feel that architecturally and contextually it's not required. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it's to specify the facade of the applicable facade of a building or something like that. Um, yeah, I think that that's yeah. that's probably getting yeah. to it. Yeah. yeah, that sounds a lot better. I don't think we're a total agreement. No, we're not. Not uh, yet. Uh, me, me and Gene are not in agreement as, as far as right. I mean, I agree with the with principles of facade of either having reducing that setback, but the side yard, the side yard. I'm not, we're not on, I'm not on board on that quite yet. Yeah, I understand. You know, just for the continuation of the, the rhythm of the street. Also, can we say allow for an exemption rather than provide for an exemption? <laughs> provide sounds like it's mandatory. Allow is, gives us some flexibility. Yeah, and I would agree. I think that through the discussion that we're going to have, we'll be able to identify, again, whether it's specificity or whether it's um, an allowance for addressing each individual project and being able to provide that um, that space to to be able to make the right decision for the for the project we'll, we'll come to that Steve any thoughts on this one nope Kelly are you good with 
wording changes here? Okay, great. All right, um, so the next is reduced height buffer area. Jean. I just, I just don't know why we need the two between 25 and 50 feet because that locks us in to certain numbers. Could we just leave that out? Sure, absolutely. Yep. Ken? Good. Thumbs up, Steve? Not ahead. Okay. Uh, let's see. The next one is corner lot requirements. Gene. Um, I, you know, I was wondering whether this needed to be here at all since we have the authority to um, waive those. However, if we did this, then this would apply to buildings that aren't subject to environmental design review. And right. is that the intention? My, under, my recollection was that it was to make it more explicit than implicit, okay. which is... Okay, Let, let's leave it in then. Yep. Ken? No, I think it, the more definite things are, uh, it, it would promote development more just because they know what they, they are. With us, they say, well, they may grant it, it may not grant it. So I'm not, I agree with it. Steve? Uh, I have a couple of wording suggestions, or at Great. least a small wording suggestion, uh, where it says uh, reduce the requirement. I'd suggest amend the requirement. With the corner lots, I think the idea makes a lot of sense when all three lots are in the same zoning district and they have similar uses. Um, so in like an R1 or an R2 where, you know, it's all it's all 20 or 25 feet and it's all single or two family homes and you have, you know, two front yards on, on the corner, uh, that's, that's fine. But with um, the business districts that allow a greater number of uses and have a, um, a, and have different setbacks for different uses, it, it that that requirement doesn't apply so neatly. So I'd like, you know, I, you know, maybe we can consider uh, putting some constraints on that so that, well, yeah, if they are the th one, the same district, then it applies. But if they're different districts, then maybe, um, then maybe it doesn't. So are you suggesting then that we need to remove the specificity around business districts from this warrant article that gives us the latitude to write this in a more, what, to give us I, more latitude during discussion? So for, I don't think we need to remove the part that says about business districts, but, um, you know, we could, you know, for business. Now you could do it either way. Okay. <laughs> you know, if I, you know, the, yeah, I see what you mean. I would not mind removing the, the, the part about business districts in that case, you know, it will be, I, I think a little easier to work with. Kelly, do you see any challenge with that? Hey. I mean, I think the, the main thing was just um, that it seemed to me like the board was very clear about wanting to like be focused on the business districts for this suite of articles, which is why I, I kept the language very specific because I think the other challenge is when you get into town meeting, if it doesn't specify business districts, then we start to get into an argument about residential. And um, I think that's just a very different discussion. So it's worth considering whether we should be more specific about business districts. Madam Chair? Steve, please. I, I, I take, I take uh, Kelly's point. I, I think biz, it's fine to say business districts. And you, I, I think that what I'm, where sort of I was going, you could accomplish that with language. It's a, saying that this does not apply with, if the adjoining parcels are, are, are non-business districts or something along those lines. Mm. As we get into so crafting the main motion. Okay. I would leave this as it is and save that for the main motion personally. Great. Okay, so um, so just keep it as reduce the requirement for corner lots in all business districts. Steve, are you okay with that? Or amend. Oh. Amend. amend. Amend, okay, all right. 
Thank you. Great. Uh, great. So the next item is height minimums in business districts. Jean. I think it should say height and story minimums in business districts. Okay. And, and, and after the word in the second line, minimum height, it should say requirement for minimum height and number of stories. Okay, height and story minimums. And after the words minimum height and number of stories. Great. Okay, thumbs up. Good. There's, I don't know if it's necessary. I, I know in earlier discussions about this, we talked about um, exemptions for smaller parcels, um, you know, where it might not have been possible to get more than one story because of various uh, other regulations. Um, right. There is some language in the corner lot requirement. One, no, uh, the, si the, the step back requirements, the third ones. Um, so if you were to say, you know, after a uh, minimum height in all business districts, add something like, and to provide exemptions for smaller parcels for certain buildings subject to environmental design review with certain exceptions, just taking, just taking the language that was used in the, in the third one, um, then I think we have the flexibility to, you know, incorporate something like that. Okay, so wait, so we would also amend section, um, is there another, sorry, is there another section? What, under? My suggestion and Steve's suggestion is after the word districts, put a comma and say with exceptions. And then we can do all the rest. And then we can define those in the main motion. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anything else on this one? All right, let's move to Arlington Heights Business District. Jean, the first, the uh, zoning bylaw amendment, we'll go to the map amendment second. I guess and if I can just clarify real quick, um, just because this one's a little bit more complicated. Um, it doesn't, it did not appear that there were any de um, changes needed to the definitions or to section three. Um, the parking requirements in all section in section six are all use based. They're not district based, so we didn't need to amend that. Um, there would be some amendments to uh, necessary to section six. I think regarding signs, so we would need to create a new sign type, which is why that's included here. And section five would have the most substantive revisions, but mainly to the tables. Yeah, my only question is why section three was in here because I couldn't find how section three needed to be. Oh, did I leave it in here? Oh my goodness. So it does not need to be in here. <laughs> five, and six, five and six makes sense. All right. This is what happens six, when I Six I thought was only signs, yeah. Oh wait, no, I, no, you know what? Section three has to be in there. Why? Because it doesn't, because I'm wrong. It's section four. <laughs> Never mind. it doesn't have to be in. Okay. Thank you. Right. Anything else, Gene? No, that was it. Okay, good. Steve? Fine. Great. Uh, let's see. So the next is the zoning map amendment for the Arlington Heights Business District. Gene? I guess my only question is, does this need to put in, well, I have two questions. One is, does this need to actually list every one of the, um, and I don't know the answer, Every one of the parcels, or do we save that for the main motion? Doug is Doug is looking into that for us. Um, we so the map may be sufficient um, because we just want to make sure that we're delineating the barriers of the district. Um, because you know it could just like spill over into other areas, and this is what's defined in the plan. So um, on the very what is it on page four of the document. Um, as to whether the parcel IDs or the street addresses need to be included, Doug's going to get me that final information before the warrant article is due. Uh, yeah, I, that was my question. I assume we would need it for the main motion. I didn't yes. know whether we'd need it for this. I guess my other question, I took a look at, at the parcels. And so Arlington Heights has lots of 
residential parcels mixed in with the business parcels and none of those are listed here. And I sort of wondered why um, all of the residential parcels that were mixed in are excluded. I didn't look if any B5s or there are no B5s, but any others, mm -hmm. but it looked like none of the residential parcels. So if, as I was going down the zoning map, you know, I said, oh, there's a residential parcel, but it's not listed here. There's a residential parcel. So I'm just wondering why um, no residential parcels that are in the Arlington Heights Mass Ave area. Um, the plan was basically, the plan did an evaluation of the four business districts that are within mm -hmm. that kind of that delimited area. And mm -hmm. it was really looking at the similarities between those business districts and how those districts were used. It didn't evaluate whether or not the residential parcels should change. So um, I kind of kept like those R3 parcels along Mass Ave. Is that kind of what you're talking about? And then the R2 on the south side. Um, I didn't include those here just because they weren't included in the plan. Um, but like, again, it's like, I don't know if you want to be a little bit more expansive than the plan or if you want to um, start with this and see where it goes. I, I wasn't involved in the Arlington Heights process, but I think Rachel or Kin, one of them was. So I'd be interested in whether whoever was involved thinks the residential should be included so it's more comprehensive, let's say. So I, I was not involved in the um, development of the plan. I too have concerns like Jean does about the discontinuity of the Arlington Heights business district that we're looking to unify in a way. And I do know that that was one of the items identified in as a challenge in the implementation plan was dealing with the discontinuity of the three small, well, the one large and then the two small sections and trying to link be between the, the three. Mm -hmm. um, I can imagine that the um, rezoning in terms of the zoning map of the residential existing residential parcels may be harder to um, understand and to um, move through potentially at town meeting. Um, so <coughs> we, I think, would need to have a discussion around, and I think we had started this discussion back in December around what is the breadth of, of this space. So I wasn't expecting that we would have to have the map as part of the this initial filing. Um, if we do have to do that, I am really torn because I, I would like to see this as one continuous business district, but at the same time, I think it's um, important to move this forward. And if we think that it is more likely to move forward in its current form by just looking at the business districts, we should have that discussion tonight if if we are absolutely required to put a map forth. If 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 Doug comes back and says a map isn't necessary, um, we just need to say between X streets and Y streets and X streets and you know A streets and B streets. Right now it specifies the parcel zoned B2, B2A, B3, and B4. So if we were allowed to be more flexible and then if, if through public outreach and engagement, it was determined, no, don't touch the R districts, we could then amend it in the, you know, in the final map that's submitted to town meeting, we could do that. I mean, would that be your preference to be a little bit more open at this point? That would be my preference, but I'm interested to hear what other people have yeah. to say about that. And uh, maybe Ken, I know that Jean had directed that question to you as well from your involvement in the Heights. Well, I was not part of this um, time when they did this map. I, I, I agree with you, Jean. I, have no, I don't understand this map right now the way it is. I prefer it. To, it was, <laughs> I prefer if it was all continuous. And that's what I thought we we're trying to do. But this is just replicating what's happening now is patchwork stuff. Right. And um, so I'm sort of leading the other way. 
in saying, let's seriously talk about this. And either it is continuous or it stops here and those other areas go back to something else. I, I just don't see it as what we're trying to do here. Uh, I'm against it. I guess, I guess that's the word to say. So, um, Ken, you're suggesting that we, we get rid of the discontinuity, include the residential. Um, again, if we don't have to have the map, we can continue the discussion. And if through public comment, we, I think what you identified as a valid, you know, potential solution that we just focus on the larger, the largest of the districts, that, that could be one potential outcome that comes out of um, the public comment. Yeah, I think if we just, process. if we get rid of the map, all thumbs up. Let's let's keep let's keep on going. And we'll, we'll work it out. But if we have to have the map, then I would just do the big the big chunk. Okay. You would not include the residential and try and get the larger, and then yes, reduce back if that's where public comment because we can always we can always um, limit what we do. We can't expand beyond. Correct. Correct. Yes. I, yes. Right. I do one big chunk and, and say, okay, based on discussions and involvement and everything else, we cut back some stuff. But yeah. it, it just makes, I don't know. I just, it was news, it was new to me. I just, it was hard to understand why it was like that. Steve, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I agree with Mr. Lau that it is, um, you know, the, the, the um, map in the memo is a little choppy, but it's it's certainly no worse than uh, what the reality on the ground is. Um, I like the idea of having a more continue of of having continuity between the areas. Um, my one point of concern is that um, that you know conversion from R to B hasn't. I'm not aware that that's been a, a conversation, but I'm comfortable with starting with a, a larger area and you know if public comment indicates that it would be preferable to pull back a little bit then maybe we pull then pull back a little bit so do we have consensus uh there i think on this one we really need to hear back from uh doug, doug Hahn. Yeah. yeah yeah um what i have changed it to for discussion with Doug is to see if the town will vote to rezone the parcels between X and Y streets and A and B streets and Arlington Heights as represented by the, zone, the proposed map if necessary, like if that's not necessary, yeah. won't include a map um, from their current zoning districts to the AHB district. So it's it's eliminating any reference to the B district or any not including any specific R district. Right? The, the one thing I do think is that we're probably not including the I districts in this. Um, Right. Why not? Yeah. Okay. But I I think I think we have to do two things though. Don't we have to number one, we have to rezone the parcels mm -hmm. to Arlington Heights and we have to come up with what is that zone, right? So that's going to be one Warren article. And the second Warren article has to be the zoning map amendments to go along with it. So I guess the question more is. What do we need to do for the Warren article? Do we need to list every parcel? Or do we just say, you know, between X Street and Y Street on Mass Ave? That's what I'm waiting for clarification from Doug on. Right. And, it, and if we have to list every parcel, I'm not clear what our consensus is. Okay. Is our consensus to include the residential or not conclude the residential? I would include for now. And then, based on uh, what we, uh, based on what we uh, input from all the other residents, then we can always comb it, comb it back, right? But we can't, right. we can't expand it. Right. So I agree. Okay. I'll just include it for now until you know they say no, and it was okay. We, we, you know. And then we focus on the largest district. Yes, if well, we have that discussion. We have that discussion. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Steve, are you um, in agreement with that approach? Yes. Okay. Uh, Claire, yes. For what it's worth, I agree that this needs to be a continuous district. And if there are concerns about allowable residential, um, maybe that's something we can work out 
um, and better defining the district. But the reason we even decided to bring this up and to do it was because we were so concerned about these, you know, patchwork items in our in our zoning map and our zoning code. And so to, you know, even to talk about this and say, well, what are we going to start to cut out and what are we going to start to keyhole? I feel like we're already sort of undermining ourselves. So if there's an opportunity for us to do this as a continuous district in a way that makes sense, obviously that that is something I would I think is probably the best move. Great. Thank you. Appreciate the perspective. OK, uh, so our next item is industrial district uses. And this one we had a lot of discussion around. So um, I'll just give my feedback on this one. I do not think that we were in agreement at all around which uses. We were not in agreement about restricting self-storage use and we were not in agreement about animal daycare specifically. We were, we were in agreement that we needed to look at the uses and um, in some cases include less specificity around exclusions um, in order to, you know, the goal of this entire recodification of the industrial zoning area was to encourage more creative and broader use cases. And we've done the same thing that we always do here and hemmed ourselves. <laughs> in. So if there is a way that we can write this one so that we, um, it is broad enough that we don't <laughs> specifically call out restricting self-storage and allow, you know, allowing specifically animal daycare and fast food. There, there may be other things we decide we want to start al allowing. We just, we're not in agreement yet on what those are. That, that That's my two cents. So Gina, I'll keep it over to you now. I, I agree. I think the other thing is just to say, we may not be ready to do this one yet. You know, we just may not have enough, had enough discussion. <coughs> and may not be ready even when we need the motion for town meeting. So maybe we don't do this one this time at all. Ken, what are your thoughts? I'm okay with that. I think there's just so much disagreement right now on this one that uh, our, our energy is, is uh, best spent on, on the others. Uh, unless people feel like this is important, I, I think this is this will survive another year. Steve, I, I have a Kelly a question for Kelly, but I'll I'll ask you for your input first. Well, yeah, I I agree. I think we should um, you know gel more about or come to more of a consensus around the general direction. I'm okay with putting this off uh, for until a later town meeting. So my only question is for Claire and Kelly. Um, this came up because we know that there are certain um, certain businesses who are looking to locate in the industrial district and are running into these, again, this over-specification around um, exclusions in, in the area. Um, are, do you, what is your sense from an economic development standpoint on how vital this is for us to tackle this year versus waiting a year? I mean, I would love to have more options, I think, rather than fewer. It certainly makes my job and the economic development coordinator's job um, easier, but, you know, they, they should be the right uses. They should be, um, you know, I, it had never even occurred to me that you could co-locate a self-storage with something else and then, you know, have the, those different uses potentially working together. I think we could probably put some more thought into it. There's some that I think are kind of no-brainers. I, I I think a, a dog daycare makes a lot of sense in an industrial district, um, but I, I don't see us, you know, if we put this off for, for a year, I don't see it causing such havoc or being such a problem that we wouldn't be able to cite someone. Yeah, I don't, I don't also don't imagine that we're losing out on potential tax revenue for like yeah. making this decision right now instead of deciding for a special time meeting in the fall or annual time. Right. Sure. So, yeah, we don't have a shortage of zoning amendments, so I think we're absolutely. We certainly do not. <laughs> Great. So, are we in consensus that we will um, strike this from this town meeting? Okay. Great. So that will come off. Um, the next is the solar bylaw uh, in industrial districts. Gene. 
No, I think you skipped over the- Did I miss uh, one? This, the, You're um, right, I absolutely did. The industrial district development standards. Yeah, so um, a few changes I'd suggest. Mm -hmm. First, I haven't seen what the CONCOM is doing and I'm not sure design storm criteria is the right way to do this. And for those of you who don't know, I used to like head the state organization for CONCOM. So I have some feelings about that. So I'm not sure that's the right way, but I would make these suggestions that we say to establish to design storm or other criteria that must be met for <laughs> water retention treatment, because that's what it's about. So after the word met for stormwater retention and treatment. And then the word exemption should be exception. Thank you. Okay. Those all sound good to me, Ken. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Steve? Fine by me. Okay, thank you, Jean. Uh, next is the solar bylaw um, and industrial districts amendment. Gene. That's fine. We'll just have to work on the main motion. Yep. Okay. Thumbs up, Steve. Thumbs up. Okay. Um, and the last is uh, ARB jurisdiction over industrial district. Gene. Looked good to me. Okay. Ken. Thumbs up, Steve. I just, I have a couple of questions. Um, so, e under EDR, we are given jurisdiction over um, any project that has any non residential project with um, 10,000 square feet of gross floor area or more, regardless of you know, which district it's in. Um, you know, I, I, I see that, you know, with some of the some of the parcels in the industrial district, they're small. And I could see where um you know they po the nature of the parcel poses a redevelopment challenge and the flexibility offered by edr might be useful but i'm i do have reservations about imposing like a higher uh, a, a fairly high standard of review on what could potentially be smaller projects so as part of this as we create the main motion that is I believe in the way that this is worded, what we can identify, much much like in Steve, other um, in other districts and for certain uses, um, you know, there is a threshold for um, for EDR. Okay, so it would be it giving us. Um... Like it, where we currently have jurisdiction for special permit uses on Mass Ave and Broadway. In the industrial district, it might be special permit, you know, the following special permit uses or special permit uses meeting such and such a criteria. My, my understanding, go ahead, Gene. I thought what this would do would be if, if you look at, at where we have jurisdiction, the first one is construction or reconstruction on a site abutting any of the following, right? Mass Ave, Pleasant Street, Mystic, Medford, blah, 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 blah. And that we would just add and in the industrial districts. So then it would just be like anything else. It would have to have some of the other criteria. That's what I was thinking anyhow. But, uh, but Gene, Steve was referring to something like like the, the bike trail. Right now, anything that touches the bike trail, we're reviewing. Uh, right. sh should we, sh shouldn't we set some sort of limit, uh, threshold that you have to get over before we do, even though it touches the something that uh, I'm just trying to make it make it easier. So it's so mm -hmm. not not easier. Yes. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree completely. And I wanted to give all of those, you know four unit buildings touching the bike trail back to the- yes. um, hey. <laughs> We should probably add that in as, as a zoning amendment because we uh, definitely want to give those back. Do a swap. To the ZBA, to the ZBA. <laughs> they should get those back. Top industrial for 
<laughs> like I'm fine yeah. with that. <laughs> Residential spec path. But this, but, I think this, what this would allow, I think what Steve is talking about, this, you know, the wording of the. Um, of you're on the, mute, Steve. Mm -hmm. There you are. Yeah, okay. I, I, there's, yeah, I, um, yeah, I, I think that what I, what I would sort of been thinking would, would, would be would be possible under this wording. I, I will agree with Jean. All right. So I think that's it. Uh, is there anything else that um, we need to add to this or anything you'd like to revisit? Do you want me to just show you on the screen real quick? We can run through it. Jean, I, I, I just, I, I know we talked about potentially putting the footnote in for the thing yeah. that the AG's office said no. But it should never have been put in the bylaw in the first place. Yeah. You know, and I think it just doesn't look right that the AG's office said you can't do this. And we put it in the bylaw and then put in a footnote that it's here, but the AG says you can't do it. I would prefer to keep this footnote in, but to go to town meeting and have it taken out and say the AG's office said we couldn't do it. That's my preference, anyhow. Other thoughts on that? I'm on the fence. It's either way. It's it's a no brainer. I mean, who's going to oppose this? It's a get. You can't do it because it's the law. But I, I mean, I agree with Jean's point. It shouldn't be spelled out if it's incorrect. <laughs> but just from my Chief. Uh, just for my clarification, this was the section of the bylaw that um, the attorney general rejected because it would have interfered with the or changed the altered the criteria for the issuance of a building permit. Correct. This is the article that we have, that the redevelopment board opposed that was then passed by town meeting and then rejected by the attorney general. I think we should take remove the. I'm I re would really favor removing the unenforceable provision. <laughs> okay. So this would be here, it'd be under building inspector enforcement mm -hmm. um, to see if the town will vote to amend the zoning bylaw to update section 3.1B building inspector enforcement to, to to remove to remove a section that the attorney general um, rejected. Yeah, okay. this is very specific. I like that. Is it rejected don't don't the beat right around the bush. That's, that's just what it is. Is rejected the right word? I think it is, but whatever the right word is. <clears throat> uh, see, the, I think the thing is that they didn't outright reject it. You know how sometimes they kind of dance around? Right, right. They did dance around it. Well, yeah. they said you can't, can't what that said cannot, what maybe say and that the attorney so deemed, general said cannot be enforced. Right, was yeah. deemed unenforceable by the attorney general. There we go. There we go. So good. You guys are the best. Uh, I'm not even an the, attorney. Not the attorney general <laughs> deemed deemed right, deemed unenforceable. Yeah. I'll take any action related there too. It feels good. Okay. Good. Good. Okay, so open space and business districts to modify the requirements for landscape and usable open space. Um, this one just uh, to establish the criteria for such requirements for any use in the business district. Um, the step back requirements, again, we'll have to add a definition for the principal facade, but that's in the main motion. Um, to adjust the upper story building step, step back to begin at a higher story. We might not do that, but that's just leaving it in in case that becomes part of it. Um, specify the applicable facade of a building for which the step back is required and allow for an exemption, exception, not exemption, right? Or except, no, exemption for smaller parcels. Can you make it facades, specify the applicable facades? Yep. Right. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, we just reduced to between 25 to 50 feet, depending on orientation. Good. Okay. Um, and then for corner lot requirements, um, amend section uh, to amend the requirement for corner lots in all business district. Um, the next one, height and story minimums, and then um, to add a requirement for minimum height and number of stories in all business districts with exceptions. By the way, do we need to do the same thing for the industrial districts? Just curious. To establish a height minimum in the industrial district. Mm -hmm. That could be potentially more challenging because we're talking about artist housing. Where uh, residential is limited to only artist residents or artist housing in the industrial district. So if you put a two-story minimum, um, you could potentially th there might be unintended consequences of that. Okay, let's. It's not really something we've discussed. Maybe that's my right. greater okay. concern. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see here. The business district, I took out the section three because it's not in there. Um, and then this is, I will review with Doug tomorrow to just make sure we're very clear and as broad as we can be on this. Um, I want to say between X and Y streets and A and B streets on Massachusetts Avenue. Yeah. Or or does it also extend on? Um, it does extend up and down Park. All right, so you don't want to do that then, okay? Yeah. Yeah. So you can. And a little bit on, yeah. Right. Okay. Take that out. Okay. Okay. Sorry for flipping around here. Um, All right. I'll, I'll make sure that um, it, let's check with Doug tomorrow on this one. Um, and then we're just eliminating this industrial district uses. Thank you. For this one, Jean, your suggestions to establish the design storm or other criteria that must be met for stormwater retention and treatment to receive an exception to maximum height. Um, this one was good. This one was good. And then we just discussed and approved that. Right. Okay. Is there a motion to uh, submit the articles, the uh, articles to town meeting, or excuse me, the submit the articles for 2023 spring town meeting as amendment as amended? I'm sorry, I can no longer speak this evening. <laughs> and 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 with uh, the discussion with town council on, and subject to the uh, um, business right yeah. the forthcoming. Discussion I, with town council. I so move that. Great. I'll second. All right, we'll take a vote starting with Ken. Yes. Jean. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Thank you so much. And thank you, Claire and Kelly. Can I make a request? Yes. What's that? When, when we do bring this up to, uh, to vote, we're going to have some sort of graphics with this, right? I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I think. In the past, where we don't have it, we didn't have any graphics. It's 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 some of the stuffs be really hard to explain uh, real quickly. I think we need to do some sort of plans or three dimensional graphics to, to go with some of this stuff that we're planning. Not all, but some of it. Right, Kelly has her hand up. Yeah, I think um, my intention. So now that we can submit these with one minor change for the Arlington Heights district. Um, we can submit these to the warrant. Um, we don't have much on the agenda for February 6th. Um, we're inviting Beth Locke and DJ to come in to talk about economic development. But other than that, I was hoping that we could use that um, meeting as a work session so we can talk through engagement and necessary materials and kind of um, different ways that we want to engage the public and hear back from the public on how, on how these articles would both encourage economic development, but also if there's anything that people are concerned about so we can make sure that we're hearing from folks before we even, even before the hearings possibly and how are we going to engage the public that's what we're going to talk about that's after right. the six. Yeah. okay so on the table is something like what we've done in the past we we did at different schools that representative precinct precincts meetings. and then yep. 
you know, we divide things up and we all go to different areas or we just have one crew that went to all of them. I, I'm not sure how. Uh, yeah, okay, we talk about that. But yeah, I think we can, um, I think the department can come prepared to that meeting with a number of suggestions that we can talk through and maybe divide and conquer. Um, we should give most of the work to the new member who's not here yet. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think with that, we will close uh, agenda item number four and move to agenda item number five, which is open forum. So any member of the public who is with us um, tonight, uh, please raise your hand if you'd like to address the board. Okay, I see one. So um, for anyone addressing the board this evening, you will have up to three minutes to address the board and um, you please uh, start by um, identifying yourself by your first last name and address. Last name. With Don, Don Seltzer, please. Uh, good evening again, Don Seltzer, Irving Street. And I just wanna call the board's attention to 1500 Massachusetts Avenue. A Couple of years ago, you granted a special permit for this project. And I believe one of the conditions was that any significant changes would have, would have to come before the view. Uh, I don't know if any of you are aware of uh, what's being done on this property, particularly the, the parking area. Um, the builder has decided to make all of the spaces there for compact cars. Um, the ability to put in an HP space has been eliminated. And the and the driveway, which is gentle sloping one going to a transition area before it reached the sidewalk, is now a steep 15% driveway slope uh, with no transition area as it hits the, the sidewalk. Um, and as far as I know, the, the, these changes were never approved by this board. Uh, thank you. Did you have anything else? To share, I appreciate the. Um, no, that's it. Great, thank you so much. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to address the board during public comment this evening? Okay, seeing none, we will close public comment. Uh, that is agenda item number five. Agenda item number six is new business, which um, most of which I think we we addressed at the outset um, with identifying. Um, Melissa's uh, expiration of her, her term. Uh, Jean, I see you have your hand raised. Yeah, I, I just want to mention something. And it, it's sort of curious that Don said what he, what he did, because this is what I've been wondering about and hope we can discuss it at another meeting. We don't really have any feedback loop after we make a decision. Um, we sometimes, you know, um, say that, planning and community development need to review, you know, X, Y, and Z and okay. And it never comes back to us to say that has been done and here's what happened. Or in this case, and I didn't know about the one that Mr. Seltzer just mentioned, but there's never any feedback loop that says, oh, they pulled permits, they're starting to work on it. And how, you know, when the building inspector knows what the requirements are in the special permit, so I think I'd like to have a discussion at one of our meetings about how to start building that feedback loop in, into what we do. Because occasionally something comes up and it's like, oh, I don't know if that actually happened. And, and I think we should have a way that we know those things. Excellent point, Gene. You can definitely build that into a future meeting. Steve? Yes, I was wondering if um, staff had any update on the formation of the MBTA community's uh, working group. Yes, I have an update. Um, we are uh, in the process. I've uh, the the candidates for the group have have been notified. Um, I've got my mailing list together. We are trying to get an email out uh, today, the weather, you know, what got in the way, but certainly tomorrow, Kelly and I will craft an email to invite the working group members to the first meeting, which I am hoping to have a week from Thursday, um, if that time works for, uh, for, the, for the group members. Is it gonna be live in person? 
No. <laughs> virtual for now. It'll be virtual. Okay. Uh, in the evening? Yes. I'm available. Oh, good. Excellent. Um, no. Steve? Thank you, for the good, thank you for the good news, and I am looking forward to it. Okay, great. Great, thank you. Uh, any other new new business? Anything from Claire or Kelly? It's just nice to be back. We're nice so happy to have you. Good to see you. We missed you. Well, and thank you for the really good feedback on the more articles. I can always trust that I get good comments from y'all. So thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, well with that, is there a motion to adjourn? So motioned. For a second. Second. I wanted Steve to second. <laughs> In third. We'll take a vote, starting with Ken. Yes. Gene. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Thank you all for joining us this evening and have a great night. Thank you. Good night. Bye.